Christmas Eve in the nation's capital. And Fox Television Sports welcomes you to RFK Stadium, Washington, D.C., where today the regular season ends for the Carolina Panthers and the Washington Redskins. Not many trees in America have a Jerry Glanville angel on them, and thank goodness they don't. But here at Fox, he is our angel. Jerry, great to be with you, and a Merry Christmas to you and your family. Hey, it's great to be here with you, and I'm glad everybody doesn't have that angel. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. I think after seeing that, they feel the same thing. Let's talk about this game today. Carolina comes in 7-8, of eight, and they have played some very good football of late. Especially down the stretch. They have an, a record which is as good as anybody's. They got the fourth best record in the last half of the season. But what they want to do is end up with eight wins. And with eight wins, they could have the best expansion record in all of sports. And they've been playing well. Last week, they beat Atlanta down at Clemson. Now, for the Redskins, five and ten. Already two wins better than a season ago. What they want to do is end on a positive note. If they can win today, they will double the amount of wins that they had last last year, and that's what they want to get done. And everybody here in the nation's capital talking about the quarterback situation. Last, last week, Heath Schuler was injured. He fractured the pinky on his throwing hand. He's out today, and Gus Farratt will make another start at quarterback. Gus Farratt is back, and when Gus Farratt comes back, the game plan changes. You'll see deeper passes. You'll see the ball pushed down the field. With Heath Schuler, it was a running game and a shorter passing game. And for the Carolina Panthers, the rookie out of Penn State, Kerry Collins, has played some terrific football. He can have the best record for a rookie on a football team his first year since Dan Marino, if they can win today. That's pretty impressive. But while the Carolina offensive figures have been fairly prominent, it's been... Uh, sit down here. You're not leaving yet, are you? I was going to leave. Well, don't leave just yet. <laughs> Uh, you got to talk about their defense because the Carolina defense has really been playing well. The defense is what they're all about. It's called zone dog blitzing, and they blitz people up front. They're going to blitz a linebacker and drop a nose tackle. This is what this is what they've been living off of, a change up on the quarterback. Watch the nose tackle. He'll drop to a zone, so it's blitz without man-to-man -man coverage. Good pressure there by the linebacker on the quarterback. And there's all your zones covered. Nobody playing man-to-man. -man. This is how they do it. They'll blitz two inside linebackers and drop Cragen, the big nose tackle. Watch how he drops back into the zone after he ties up the blockers. And that's what you'll see all day. When you see the Panthers, you see zone dog blitzing. It's, it's been very interesting, too, because today has a lot of playoff ramifications around the NFL, which we will talk about when we come back. It's the Panthers and the Redskins up next. RFK Stadium in the nation's capital on this Christmas Eve. It has been spitting some snow. The weather right now is not that bad. Norv Turner takes his team in in his second year as the head coach. 43 years old. Nice win last week in St. Louis against the Rams. And a lot of people are thinking that Dom Capers, the coach of the Carolina Panthers, may be the coach of the year in the NFL. I think it's between him and Rhodes, two, two new coaches. Done a great, not only coach of the year, but both of them the first time ever being a head coach. And the wind swirling around RFK blows it off the tee, and so we'll have a chance to wind it up once again and some final scores. Chicago is going to the playoffs. In fact, they're going to go to Green Bay because the Packers beat Pittsburgh. San Francisco and Atlanta in the fourth in what has been a tremendous game down there. New Orleans beats the Jets, and you see the rest of the scores today. Here we go. John Casey, the kickoff, picked up by Brian Mitchell, and he gets a block in one of the top return men in the NFL. Mitchell is on his way past the 30, by the 35, and out to the 37-yard line, brought down by Brent Theronese. A return of 33 yards as Gus Farratt will make the start today. 15th start in his career, the 11th this season. On the offensive line, some big bodies, Pat Brown, Giesick, Trey Johnson, who's been very effective when healthy and Ed Simmons who hasn't missed a snap all season. Terry Allen, Mark Logan in the backfield, Ellard and Westbrook the receivers and Scott Galbraith will be the tight end for Washington lining up first down and 10 yards to go just inside their 38 and on first and 10. Slipping is Farratt with the pump fit and then throwing it away because his receiver across the way Henry Ellard was covered. Now the defense, which is the eighth-ranked defense in the NFL for the Panthers, one of the few teams that utilizes the 34. Williams, Greg Craigan having a terrific year with the dominant Mike Fox on the defensive line. Linebackers, Connor Bailey-Mills, who just missed the Pro Bowl, and Lamar Lathan. 
And the secondary with cornerbacks McKayer and the rookie Poole with Pat Terrell with the big interception last week and Brett Maxey at the strong safety. It is second down and 10 and the handoff goes to Terry Allen. Works his way for a gain of a yard. It'll be third and nine. Mills and Greg Craig and make the stop. And Terry Allen has been the story for the Redskins for this season. If you're going to pick a most valuable player as a Redskin, this has to be the guy with 1,217 yards. Three wide receivers now for the Washington Redskins with Mitchell in the backfield with a third and nine facing quarterback Gus Farrell. His own 38-yard line. Blitz is on, the quick pass is away, tipped and incomplete at the 48-yard line. Rod Smith got a hand on it, covering Michael Westbrook, and on the first possession today, Redskins have got a punt the ball. And Michael Westbrook, their number one pick, he's the guy they wanted in the draft, so they could help Schuler, who they thought was going to be their quarterback, but that ball was thrown high and behind him. No chance for the number one pick of last year. One of the top punters in the National Football League, Matt Turk, will be punting from inside his 27. Mark Carrier is deep back for the Carolina Panthers. The punt is high and hanging. Back to the 17-yard line comes Carrier. It runs and brought down on the play. Big hit made by Brian Mitchell on the punt of 44 yards by Redskin punter Matt Turk. Now for the Carolina offense, and there's Kerry Collins, who their coach last week, Don Capers, said had the best game of his career, including an 89-yard touchdown pass to Willie Green. On the line, Rockermeyer's had a great season. Garcia, another rookie, with Whitley, Matt Elliott, and Mark Davis. Mark uh, Dennis, rather. The running backs are Derek Moore and Bob Christian, two guys that Coach Glanville taught at one time. Green and Carrier, the wideouts, and Pete Metzelars will be the tight end. Moore's in the backfield and gets the handoff on first down and 10 yards to go and Derek Moore works his way near the 22 before he's brought down by Mark Boutte on the defensive line. Boutte is on that defensive line, a 43 look for the Redskins with Tony Woods who recovered a fumble and took it in the end zone last week in St. Louis. William Gaines and they like this rookie Rich Owens a great deal. Linebackers Hatton now leads the team in tackles. Rod Stevens is second and Ken Harvey is going to the Pro Bowl. The cornerbacks Gerald Green will wind up his 13th year this year with Carter at the other corner. Washington and Stanley Richard will be in the safeties. Blair Thomas gets the call on second down and seven yards to go, and he's out near the 25, edging his way to the 26, and the entire defense had a hand on that tackle. You usually say tackled by the team picture. That's, that's one thing that the uh, Carolina Panthers are going to do. They're going to keep running, even if they're not gaining big yardage, and try to play for the game to be there in the fourth quarter. That's how they've had their success, and that won't change today. Good crowd making a lot of noise here today. Anthony Johnson is now in the backfield for quarterback Terry Collins. Third down and three. Johnson comes in motion out of the backfield. Collins with great time from that line, and the throw is doubled, and finally caught. First down, Willie Green out to the 45-yard line, a gain of 19. Crossing route by Willie Green. Willie Green's the one with the best speed on the team. Watch the good protection. Nobody pressuring the quarterback. There goes Willie right across the formation, went through all the zones, went through three linebackers, and got all the way over to the safety position. And Green picks up the first down of the play. Derek Moore is in the backfield with Christian at his side. First down and 10 yards to go from the 45. Derek Moore by midfield carries a defender on his back and picks up six. Marcus Patton finally makes the stop. And both teams like a lead draw look. And lead draw is a little hesitation with the lead blocker. Here's the lead blocker. Watch him take a little jab step and try to follow right up through. Nice job by Garcia pulling from the backside. Garcia, another rookie guard, but he's short and squatty. And he has good body balance for pulling and leading plays to the other side of the line. Second down and four from the 49. Collins again with great time to throw and finally locates Mark Carrier near a first down at the 44 of Washington. Finally brought down by Rod Stevens, the linebacker. Carrier leads the team in Carolina receptions. And he's a guy that, uh, uh, being with a few football teams, was left unprotected 
Watch him come across. He was at Cleveland and got picked up in the expansion draft. He says the best thing that ever happened to him, especially what's happening at Cleveland. And it's a big deal with Carolina. Oh, they love him there. He's doing an excellent job. First down and 10 at the 44-yard line of Washington for the Carolina Panthers. Christian is emerging out of the backfield, and Collins throws a pass that gets caught by Carrier, and spinning his way inside the 30, he works his way to the 25. A big pickup of 19 yards. Excellent protection when you don't rattle a quarterback, even a rookie, and after uh, after 20 games in the count in the preseason, it's a three-step drop, quick slant. They throw more slants, quick inside slants than anybody in football. And I, I asked the uh, you were there when I asked the, the Redskins, will you play inside? They said no. And some people will have to take the slant. Gets inside the 25. Rod Stevens was the first to get a lick on him. One time, Derek Moore was a running back for Jerry Glanville in Atlanta. And he had a nickname, Herky Jerky, there. And you can see in his running style, he's not smooth. He works so hard, he jerks himself around. But an all out effort guy. I got a 13 year at home that I would hope could grow up and be like that guy. That he, guy, he's the best. He was injured early in the season, too. Had a knee injury that many people thought would require some surgery, but he said, No, I'm going to. To keep playing. He's a guy that wouldn't take the doctor's recommendation. Said, I'll be back, I'll play, I'll help the team. Second down nine, he escapes the grasp of one oncoming defender, Pat and Collins throws incomplete downfield. He was looking for Carrier. Collins is 6'5, built like a tight end, but he plays quarterback. Now watch him get away. Patton shifts over to the outside. He's here. He's going to walk over and then blitz. Watch me. All right, now he's out of the screen. He's going to come from the right. Untouched by human hands. And look at Collins get away. Patton's going to be mad when he sees that because he should have had a sack on that play if he stayed up high so he couldn't get outside. Lost containment. There's Marcus Patton. Not a very good third down team, this Carolina ball club. Third down to nine. Ninth play of the drive inside the 25. Flag is thrown, stopping the play before they allow it to complete. And it was a sudden flag thrown by Bernie Kukar, who is our referee today. Ball here start. Number 88 on the offense. Tries on the snap. That's a five yard penalty. Still third down. Tight end flinched and jerked. He was going to pull out of there on a different count. He, too, had been injured and missed some games. The tight end's right here. Watch what he does. That's a penalty. Third down and 14 with the penalty. Three wide receivers, six defensive backs. Collins will drop back to throw. And finally finds his running back, Anthony Johnson who is to the 23, 24-yard line, and Keith Taylor jumped on him and brought him down. And Carolina will have to try for three. When you watch the Panthers, you look for slants. Slants are outside receivers coming in, and that's their number one throw. Is it dictated, Jerry, by personnel, by just the comfortableness of the quarterback? Why is that? I think they feel it's an easier throw for the quarterback. I asked him last night, do you have out routes? Uh, you know, in the book, can you throw out routes? He said, we have out routes, but, but we mainly call the inside cuts. Injury timeout here in Washington. It's capital on Christmas Eve. Happy to have you with us. 42-yard field goal try by John Casey, the punter Tommy Barnard will be holding. The wind is negligible here at RFK today. 42-yard attempt for the game's first score is up, and it is good. John Casey puts the Carolina Panthers on the board. On the first possession for coach Dom Capers. And as it begins to spit a bit of snow here in Washington, D.C., it's Carolina 3 and Washington nothing. Carolina got a punt from the Redskins. March downfield and got a 42-yard field goal from John Casey. A 10-play drive, just under five minutes on the first quarter clock. 3-0 Carolina. Ryan Mitchell is deep back as the Panthers kick off for a second time. Ryan Mitchell at the eight-yard line for Washington. Brings it up the side. Gets another block and has room to go. Mitchell by the 40-yard line and out to the 43. 
He returned the first kickoff 33 yards. This one, he runs back 35 yards, and already Brian Mitchell is making his presence felt. And don't forget, when they punted, he's the one that made the tackle. All right, spend Sunday. New Year's Eve day with Fox's live coverage of the NFC wildcard game. Don't miss the excitement and drama as the road to the Super Bowl begins. And before the action, check out America's number one pregame show for the latest in news and information around the league. On first and ten, the handoff goes to Terry Allen, who follows blocking out near the 45, picks up three yards on the play. It'll be second down. Terry Allen over 1,000 yards this season. Carlton Bailey finally stopped him. And they like to pull the guards and get him on the corner. And one thing about Terry Allen, when he gets going and gets to running, that's when the Redskins have had their success. And that mainly happened uh, when Gus Farad got hurt. They quit throwing deep and went to the running game. So uh, we'll see which one he goes to today. With, with Gus in there, whether they'll stick to the running game or not is the big question. Second down, a long five. And Allen just slipped that time. Just went down at the 47-yard line. And Probably picked up uh, no more than a half yard on the play and some pushing downfield. Ed As Simmons. Ed Simmons was working on Carlton Bailey. You see Terry Allen now just 125 rushing yards away before he meets the record of the legendary John Riggins. And John Riggins holds every rushing record there is here at the Redskins. He does. The Diesel. The Diesel. And a pretty good uh, dinner partner, too. Well, Sandra Day O'Connor should tell you that. Whoa, whoa. Third down and five. Three wide receivers for the Redskins. And a little bit of trouble around Farrant. Finally gets it off to Jamie Asher with his 14th reception of the year. It's a gain of 10, and it's a Redskins first down to the Carolina 44. And a real nice job by Brian Mitchell. He has to pick the blitz coming off the left side. He's going to walk up and blitz. This is Brian Mitchell, and he's got to get the job done so the quarterback has the time. There's the block, has him stuffed, keeps him away from Gus Farad. Two tight ends in last week. The Redskins did not even throw to a tight end. There's a good shot on first and ten to Terry Allen, who runs into his home blocker. as Trey Johnson, and then grabbed him and brought him by the 40 and near the 39-yard line. Now, the rule by NFL, he cannot help him advance on yardage when when he ran into him, he's tackled by Trey. Trey cannot pull him towards the goal line. That's an illegal play. There's the cutback. Now watch big Trey right there. Whoop! And he grabs him. He says, come on. Yep. He's not allowed. <laughs> wow. Green Bay has won today. They win the Central Division. First division title since 1972. Second down and six. Allen is in the backfield by himself. Throws and a nice catch made downfield. Michael Westbrook first down and Farrant right on the money picks up 20 yards on the completion of the rookie from Colorado. And Westbrook will help whichever quarterback plays because the ball does not have to be right in the exact place. He can catch it, stretch out, leave his shoes. He did that last week, made low catches for his shoulder before he went out. He's had knee and ankle injuries this season. He's missed five and a half games for Coach North Turner, but Turner said last week when he is in the game, things completely change for our offense. That's evidence right there. First down and ten, and the reverse. And it goes to Leslie Shepard with the quarterback for Rod giving a block inside the five and out of bounds at the one. That may be the best block by any quarter. He, he looked like a guard. <laughs> Gus Verratt gets right up on the defender. This was wide open. When, from up here, right now, we knew it had a shot at a touchdown. And last week, he ran one for 17 yards in the same exact play. Now look at the block by Gus. He's still chasing. Of course, he's blocking on Tim McCarr. That doesn't count. Well, on Christmas, you get gifts, and that was a nice gift by the Redskins. Now inside the one, first down and goal to go for the Redskins. 3 0 Carolina's on top. Terry Allen. Touchdown, Washington. Redskin band, don't you? It's a good one. Woo. 
up and over by Terry Allen. Allen has his ninth touchdown run of the season. Eddie Murray will be trying the extra point. That's a seven play drive, 58 yards, a little over four minutes on the first quarter clock. Four 50 remaining now in the first quarter. And on the Gus Farad hold, Murray splits him at 7-3. Washington takes the lead. Redskins get a one-yard touchdown plunge by Terry Allen, number 21, with his running mate Mark Logan right there. A big run for Allen. But on that drive, a 20-yard reception by Michael Westbrook, a 17-yard end around by Leslie Shepard. Setting up the Redskins who go on top, 7-3. To Dwight Stone, the former Steeler, is deep back at about the 10 on the kickoff by Eddie Murray of the Redskins. John Beebe, former Buffalo Bill from the 15. Out of bounds he goes. Terry Cruz makes the special team stop. And let's take another look at that Redskin touchdown. And watch Terry Allen, where he where he is when he leaves the ground. Takes off. The ball's the inside the one. Watch where he takes off from. He's at the three, two and a half, and up and over. That's pretty easy. That, that, that's no good, boy. Pat Terrell was blitzing off the corner. We just didn't have enough time to get enough, uh, enough on him. Couldn't get him with his head gear. Only hit him with his arm. Panthers are trying to become the first expansion team to finish 500 during the regular season. Flags are thrown with the first down pass. It's caught. Willie Green maneuvers out to the 36-yard line. Marcus Pep makes the stop, and you see Chicago winning. But because Atlanta won today in a shocker over San Francisco, Chicago is eliminated from the playoffs. Cincinnati playing the Vikings. New Orleans with the win in Green Bay, as you see right there. Clinching the Illegal NFC motion. Central Division. Kansas City will have a bye next offense. week. Moving forward towards the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. 88. Pete Metzelar is the tight end. That's two penalties on him already. He'll be in motion. And when you're in motion, you cannot be moving towards the line of scrimmage. They think here he is. He's going towards the line of scrimmage. Good call. First down and 15 with the penalty. That's pushed back to the 25 yard line. Long throws caught by Anthony Johnson, the running back, and down he went, and in a hurry. Brought down by the ever-pursuing Marcus Pett. Right now for McDonald's game break, let's say good afternoon and Merry Christmas to James Brown and, and Hollywood. Merry Christmas to you. Take a look at how Atlanta made it into the postseason. Bobby A. Bear with time, hooks up with Terrence Mathis with the bullet. Nice move by Mathis as he heads in for the second of his touchdowns in Atlanta. First time since 91 in the playoffs. Back to Kevin and Jerry. You were coaching them in 91. Well, this is the first time they've been in the playoffs. I haven't been there. I feel kind of left out. <laughs> Second 19 handoff goes to Anthony Johnson, and the entire defense basically got a hand out on that time. You see Gaines and Rich Owens getting up off the pile. Anthony Johnson, a former Chicago Bear, Indianapolis Colt. Third down back, and a good one. defensive signals from the sideline. Third down and 15. Collins with some pretty good time and throws to his receiver Willie Green and complete downfield at the 35 covered by Tom Carter. And Ken Harvey is all over the quarterback. I believe the Panthers had a touchdown but Ken Harvey you're going to see him loop come to the inside all the way there's 57 come all the way in the loop and he was smart enough to see how clever he was not to hit the quarterback after the ball came out. Nice job. Tommy Barnard, the former New Orleans Saint, will be punting for the Carolina Panthers. First time he's been booting today inside the 15-yard line. Good back is Brian Mitchell. Leads the lead in so many categories and he calls for the fair catch back at the 28. 47-yard punt by Carolina. 251 here in the first quarter. It's 7-3, the Redskins. 
and our cameras went inside the Glanville home. The, I'm sorry, the Glanville <laughs> Mansion down in Atlanta and caught that beautiful holiday scene. You'll see your family tonight, late, but nonetheless, we them on Christmas Eve. From the 28-yard line, Redskins first down and 10 yards to go. And Gus Barat goes right to work and dumps it across the middle, caught by Terry Allen, who maneuvers his way to the 35. With a gain of six, it'll be second down. And there's the poise of a young quarterback learning how to play. This is not his first choice. This is not his second choice. But there's nothing open. The Panthers have everything deep covered. Watch him just sit there and say, well, that's not there. That's not the one I want. I'll find the close over with Terry Allen. And that's a good job of having patience and throwing what, what they're giving him. Barat making his 15th start of this season of the uh, two-year career today, 11th of this season, second down and four handoff. Terry Allen brought down by former Atlanta and New Orleans linebacker Darian Connor as we see Norm Turner, who Jerry has uh, showed progress almost in any, every category on this team except for the quarterback. It has been mostly inconsistent at that one position all season long. Well, neither young quarterback can grow and get better without experience. And when you got two of them and you rotate them around, he hasn't done that by choice because of the injury, I think you stop the growth of both of them. You got to pick one and uh, move the other one out of town and let, let the one just grow up into the position. Third down at three, ball at the 36-yard line, and the pitch out goes to Terry Allen. He's got the first down as he submarines his way to the 41-yard line. Now, he's the key. He also becomes a free agent. He does. Signed for one year, $400,000 from the Vikings in this past offseason. Well, that's the man they have to have back. He has become the heart and soul of the offense and when he runs the defense gets to play better. Trey Johnson with a nice block. And when Trey Johnson is blocking ahead, this Redskin team is four and two. When he's injured, they're one and eight. First down and ten. Once again, Terry Allen. And back to the line of scrimmage, maybe brought down by Tyrone Poole, also hit by Lamar Latham, the linebacker. And Ray Brown, the left guard, is pulling out trying to lead this play. Watch Big 67. But he runs into Lamar Latham, and watch the rookie corner come up. Get right underneath the tight end blocking. Tyrone Poole, I think, is a candidate for Rookie of the Year in the National Football League. He's a quick one. He can cover the pass. He forces the run. Has great speed. As good a rookie corner as I've seen in the last four years. Second down and ten. And it's out to the side with a clear pass. Caught by Allen down the sideline and up to the 48-yard line as Pat Terrell finally makes the stop the former Los Angeles Ram. And getting away from Pat Terrell is hard to do. Something Ironhead couldn't do last week, but a nice cut by Terry Allen. So Don Capers and his Panthers down 7-3 at the end of the first quarter. We begin the second quarter with the Redskins on a Terry Allen one-yard touchdown run on top of the Carolina Panthers, 7-3. And the playoff picture in the NFC looks this way. Division winners, San Francisco, Dallas, and Green Bay. Philadelphia lost today in Chicago, but they're there. Detroit has been on a tear. They won yesterday in Tampa. And Atlanta today shocks San Francisco. And by San Francisco losing, it opens the door for a Dallas win tomorrow night at Arizona. If Dallas wins, they have the home field. If they lose, San Francisco has the home field in the playoffs. Third down and three. Hand off to Brian Mitchell. And the first down to the 48-yard line. Watching Brian Mitchell run, he looked like he had a burst. And when we started this segment, we saw him changing cleats on Terry Allen's shoes. So it looked like Mitchell may already have the longer cleats. He's got that burst on a sloppy field. First down and 10 at the 49-yard line of Carolina for the Redskins on top, 7-3. To little play fake by Farrakh. Drilled as he threw, but then drills the pass to Henry Eller. And a catch at the 31, a pickup of 18. And what a nice throw. Pressure coming after this young quarterback, and he's throwing the inside dig. He's going to get the inside dig and watch the pressure on the quarterback. Is that because he's digging into the middle of the he, field? He, no, there it is right there. It's called a dig or a center. People call it one or the other. 
Easy throw. Somebody's got to take the safety out to run the dig. Somebody else got to go through the post. The opposite wide receiver. Eight play of the Redskins drive from the 31. First attempt for Farad going deep on the pump fake and looking for Westbrook, who's double teamed, and it's incomplete in the end zone. Covered by both Tim McKayer and Brett Maxey. It'll be second down. Try to double move against McKayer. McKayer never bit on the first one. And Brett Maxey, it really was a double cover. He came all the way over there after the throw. Maxey's gone. He sees where it's going. And McKayer never got fooled. Never got fooled at all. Nice job by McCarr. He had it played, but Maxey jumped out of the hole, which is called the post. The hole got out of there before the ball did. Nice job by both of those defensive backs. That secondary is pretty good for Carolina. I love their safeties. Their safeties will hit as good as the Rams' safeties. Down for the blitz, and they got somebody moving out the wing. That was uh, left tackle Joe Pat, number 68. All start. Number 68 on the offense prior to the snap. That's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. And Joe Patton, there's a guy that went to college as a walk-on, no scholarship, paid for his first three and a half years of college. At to, Alabama a &M. At Alabama a and they finally, they finally gave him a scholarship his last half of his senior year. He was not even recruited to go to college. He wanted to go in the Navy. I don't think he's too big. I know he couldn't fit in the submarine. <laughs> second down, 15 for Rock. Going to his second option. A nice snap away by the quarterback, rookie Tyrone Poole. Stride for stride with Leslie Shepard. You like Poole? Oh, Poole. Cool. Poole for a rookie. He's all over it. He's over everything. He's never threatened on the deep. You can see he'll squat. You can see he never even backpedaled. Most corners, Kevin, get worried if I don't backpedal, somebody's going to run by me and beat me deep. He didn't worry about it. So what does he go, sideways, or he just goes back? He, you see him there, he just squatted. He's just, what are you going to do? I'm going to do it with you. It's quick enough he can pull it off. Uh, absolutely. Third and 15 for Farad. And it's almost picked off on the play. Pat Terrell just about got in the way. It was intended for Brian Mitchell. Fox and Sean King came up the middle. And Pat Terrell played such a great game just a week ago, and he's the guy that jumps out on the screen with you. When you watch him, makes great hits, great tackler. He went the same school as the corner for the Redskins, Tom Carter. They both went to high school in Lakeland, Florida. Same high school. We just saw Mark Carrier standing at the 10 for the Carolina Panthers, and Matt Turk will be punting. He has the most punts inside the 20 in the NFC. Can he get another one right here? Nope. A little bit long. 36-yard punt. Touchback to the 20 and 4. The Carolina Panthers, who trails 7 to 3. Jerry and I had a little tour of the Capitol <laughs> yesterday. We enjoyed that. What I like is if we miss our plane, we're going to the White House. Yes. That's where we'll sleep tonight. First family has invited us over there. You'll be with socks, and I'll be with... Uh, I'll be in the Lincoln bedroom. In the Lincoln bedroom? Yes. You have the hair for it. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina gets a first down, 10 yards to go at their 20-yard line. Bob Christian is in the backfield for rookie quarterback Terry Collins, who throws a pass, which is picked off on the near side. James Washington inside the 20 and the 16-yard line. Collins intercepted. And Christian was to the tight end. He was, they wanted to get three people. They want to get him to the flat so he can come in and be open and him clear it out. And while all that's going on, it's an interception. Nice job. There's the tight end. He overthrew him. And the man covering the corner's position picks it up. It's a three-man flood to his right, and he overthrew it. Last week, this defense forced the St. Louis Rams into four turnovers. Great opportunity for Gus Farratt from the 16-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go, and Terry Allen gets the call. Bouncing outside. Allen inside the 10, down to the 5, and out of bounds there with the first down pickup of 11 yards. The play was designed to go off tackle, and Lamar Latham plays it with his outside arm. In other words, he has, he's going to squeeze it inside. Watch Lamar. They're all down inside, and that makes the back bounce outside, and he's got the speed. Pat Terrell did a good job chasing him down. 
Akira had a shot at him, too. First and goal from the five. Redskins lead it seven to three. Mark Logan to the four. Gerald Williams, 10-year player, an unrestricted free agent for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Had a nice season on that defense for the Carolina Panthers. Finally makes the stop on Mark Logan, who has had a lot of stops himself in his long career. He's played for five head coach. Running to the right on the Panthers, you got to remember Mike Fox is over there. And he's the one big, strong guy that can win in a pushing contest. So 93, Mike Fox will crowd up that side right there. Second down and goal, Allen to the one. He's already scored once today at a one-yard touchdown run. That time he met Darian Connor. It'll be third and goal. There's Fox. Now, you got to bounce outside or run inside to the left. They bounced it out, so that's okay. You can't run off tackle. He's the one guy that can win in a pushy contest. We were both surprised the Giants let him go. What a good player he was for the Giants. You cannot lose people of Fox caliber in the free agency. A third goal from the three for run is sack back at the 12-yard line. The blitz coming on from Darian Connor, 56. Wow, and Farratt's hurt. Farratt is hurt. And Farratt, don't forget, is the holder on the field goal. He is. I had Darian Connor. We drafted Darian in Atlanta, and Darian Connor. Go, look at that. Nobody got him. They're trying to pull the guard out, Ray Brown. And Ray got tied up with a man on his nose. And that'll get your quarterback killed. Well, the Redskins already lead 7-3. to three. We'll get an Eddie Murray attempt here. From 29 yards. Gus Farrakhan will hold on this field goal try, and it's good. And look at Gus. Gus has had better days. Gus is in pain coming off the field. 29-yard field goal. It mixes the Redskin lead. Darian Connor just drilled the quarterback his seventh sack of the season. Watch for watch for Rott's head. Watch the quarterback's head on impact. And you think they earned their money? He gets whiplash. And it looked like a legal hit. Kickoff for Washington. Short. Right in front of Dwight Stone. It just falls on the ball in a heap at the 22-yard line. Well, as September Fox and the producers of the X-Files took you into the 21st century, and launched a new breed of action-adventure television. Catch a special two-hour presentation of TV's most heart-stopping drama. Space Above and Beyond, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central here on the Fox Television Network. Gus Farratt may be calling a doctor. He's calling 911. I need help out there. And that may be the guy that gives it to him. That's Heath Schuler not playing today because of a fractured pinky in his right hand. On first and 10. And about the 30 by Mark Carrier. And Mark's injured. Oh, in the lower part of his back, it looks like. I don't know if he caught a helmet low after the catch. He ran a turn in, came down the field, turned in on the number. So he's down, and he got the knee of James oh, Washington boy. in his back. As Washington was going over the top of him, he hit him with an elbow and a knee. 2.49 remaining in the second quarter. There is an injury timeout. Now today's AFLAC trivia question. What pro sports expansion team have the highest win percentage in their first season? The answer's coming up. Okay, again, today's AFLAC trivia question is what pro sports expansion team had the highest win percentage in their first season? The answer is the Panthers of the NHL. The 93-94 Florida Panthers finished their first season with the win percentage of 49%. Fox Sports coverage of the NHL begins January 20 with the All-Star game. Second down and three. Anthony Johnson burrows for a couple. Out to about the 31. Ken Harvey made the stop, and Don Beebe is taking the place of the injured Mark Carrier, who walked off the field under his own foul. 
Right now from McDonald's Game Break, let's go back live to Hollywood and our own Santa Claus, James Brown. All right, Kevin, nursing a one-point lead. Atlanta was trying to hold on. This is the last play by San Francisco, picked off by Kevin Ross. That sealed the Atlanta victory. They are in the playoffs for the first time since 91. And Jerry, is Kevin talking about your cowboy boots? <laughs> he's saying my boots are on fire up here. Third down. Wow, he does. Big run up the middle taken by Derek Moore. First down to the 41 yard line. Watch this guy. We call him Herky Tricky, and you'll see why. His shoulders are moving everywhere. His head is bobbing. I got to thinking he'd be a pretty good fighter. And you, you're the new fight doctor for Fox. Watch him come <laughs> up through here. All out effort, all out heart guy. Played at about 15 different colleges, <laughs> huh? Went to numerous colleges, was with the Falcons, 49ers, Detroit. Found a home in the Carolinas. Barry Sanders back up at Detroit. That means you never get to play. First first down since the first drive of the game for Carolina. At the end around handoff goes to Dwight Snow. He gets no place because he's wrapped up by Daryl Green, who read it beautifully, now concluding his 13th season in the NFL. Here is a guy that's been here forever, been to all the Super Bowls. They know he can run. Talking about Daryl Green, and all he does, he's all alone on this play. If he doesn't make the tackle, everybody else, 24 gets picked off, and now it's one man to beat. And guess what? Two-yard gain by the old man, Daryl Green. He won a game earlier this season against the Detroit Lions as he picked off a Scott Mitchell pass. Second down and seven, off the 44. Collins, Christian, and he bobbles it home and gets a first down to the 49-yard line of Washington. And this guy can run after the catch. The game against the Saints, he ran over the whole football team after he made the catches. Now here, this is not a smooth. Here's a Northwestern guy that had a play there before they won, before anybody paid any attention to Northwestern. He was their all-time leading rusher. Now everybody knows about Northwestern. Comes from Chicago. You had him down in Atlanta. Yeah, we drafted him and a, a good person. I think what's good about the Panthers is the character inside their players. They'll take a lesser player that's a better person. I like that. First down and two. Derek Moore trying to shimmy up the middle and works his way near the 45 and picks up two and a half. Marv Kiss Patton has now taken over the tackler lead from Rod Stevens. Makes the stop as you see that big Atlanta win today over San Francisco. Vikings don't go to the playoffs. New Orleans finishes 7-9 after beginning 0-5. Kansas City home field throughout the playoffs. Houston with the big win in Buffalo. Jacksonville finishes their expansion season 4-12. and 12. One thing about Buffalo, they weren't going to play many of their starters. That's right. Second down and eight. Seventh play of the drive for Terry Collins. Blitz is on. Patton has got the sack. Number 53. They're bringing him more today than normal. What do you think they see that they're sending him all the time? I think a young quarterback. The younger the quarterback, the more you come after him. He'll come off here to the right of your screen. And there he is coming all the way to the outside. They did a trick inside. They ran a trick inside. And the back was hot. If the quarterback reads this, he's got to dump it to Derek Moore, but the quarterback didn't read it. That's the first sack allowed by the offensive line in four games. Second sack in the last 139 pass attempts. And that really wasn't by the offensive line. That one there was. And he's sacked again. Brought down. This time, Rich Owens, who gets his third sack of the year. The rookie. The Richie Redskin, they call him. Here's a guy getting a sack from Lehigh. How many times have you seen a guy from Lehigh get a sack unless he's in a grocery store? <laughs> he just keeps working. All out effort makes it down. What I like about the Redskins, it's young guys making plays at the end of the year. So you, you get to thinking, hey, we got a future if you're a Redskin fan. That's a good pick by Charlie Casserly and Joe Mendez, a fifth round selection. Richie. Uh, Richie Redskin. Richie Owen. <laughs> you can call him Richie Redskin. <laughs> Penalty flag thrown, so they'll... We interviewed him last week. He was probably the nicest guy we interviewed all year. I asked him, if you're drafted late in the, in the draft like you were, 
What's the first thing you buy? We have a neutral buy? zone infraction on the defense, number 88. That's a five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Say the first thing you get's a new set of wheels. That's got a new drive. You got to get a new ride. Great season for Tommy Barnhart and a great season as well for Brian Mitchell, who is second in the NFL behind Palmer, David Palmer up in Minnesota. Returning punts. Barnhart will get this inside the 20. Their catch is signaled for an allotted two. Mitchell back at the 16-yard line. That's a punt of 32 yards. The Redskins on Christmas Eve on top. Redskins have scored 10 unanswered points. They've got a touchdown lead over the Carolina Panthers and a big day for Terry Allen. Really a big season. Vikings wouldn't pay him what he thought he was worth. Came here as an unrestricted free agent. And now he's only 110 yards away from breaking the all-time single season Redskin rushing record of the legendary John Riggins. He's got a good start at it today. But the Redskins have their worst starting field position of the day. But that's helped quickly by a Terry Allen run up the middle as he takes it to the 22. A lot of defenders got a hand on him right there, including number 57, Lamar Lathan, the linebacker. And there's a big difference in the size of the Redskins in the middle in the Carolina Panthers defense. And the more they run it, the more they'll start to wear down the smaller Carolina people in the middle. Second down and five, Allen with 36 yards today, running the ball for the Washington Redskins. A little bit in the backfield, they'll bring that back as Allen got the call and just barely got back to the line of scrimmage before he was brought down by Brett Maxey and Sam Mills. Looked like Mark Logan jumped off sides in the backfield. And what's unusual, the Carolina Panthers only have nine running plays compared to the Redskins' 14. That's not what the Carolina Panthers want to do. The Redskins want to keep running up inside in the middle and try to wear them down for the fourth quarter. That's what they've been getting done. Carolina has the seventh best rush defense in the NFL, too, so it's going to be a pretty good short for the Redskins today. And they really stopped the run by Blitzdog. Number 20 on the offense, offside on the defense. The penalty's offset, second down. They'll do it again. Coach is trying to turn down the penalty. That here, here's what we're talking about. The Redskins interior, the, the two good guards in the center average 311 pounds, and the Panthers in the same area, 247. They've been eating pretty good. Second down and five. And out to the 22-yard line with the carry is Terry Allen. Sam Mills and Carlton Bailey bring them down. That's a pretty good disparity. That's a big difference, and it will really take its toll if they can keep running plays going up the middle and then maybe by the fourth quarter is where that where that'll take place and what happens is uh, that extra 50 60 pounds just keeps wearing on you look what it did for you thank you <laughs> I can tell that uh, what your wife's getting you for Christmas <laughs> third down and four too bad you won't get home <laughs> Barat flips his oh, and Barat goes down at the 11-yard line. Sacked for a second time. That one was led by 57, Lamar Latham. That was a jailbreak. That, you call Lamar Latham only because he was first. He wasn't alone. I don't think I've seen that many guys wow. sack the quarterback at once. He did the loop inside, and then the inside backer looped the outside, and they blocked absolutely no one. Three guys on Wow, I tell you what, the offensive line coach there, he'll, he'll get in trouble with that. you got to take a stick and beat him. Second three and out for the Redskins. Matt Turk to punt once again, and rush was on, but the punt is away. On the fly. A healthy Mark Carrier had to leave the field earlier, and he takes it inside the 45, and down to the 43, there is a flag, a 37-yard punt. And the fullback for the punter, the punt was going to be blocked. So the fullback did whatever he could do. He tackled the man. And the official was wide awake. He saw it. 36 on the offense. The penalty is declined. First down. Penalty against Washington. Watch Bell. He's, he's the fullback, the lone protector in the backfield. He's right here, and he says, this thing's going to get blocked if I don't do something. Oh, there he is. Oh, did he pull him down? Grabbed a hole and lassoed him. Santa Claus won't bring him any gifts. 
That's Chidi. Bad boy. Bad boy. <laughs> so great beginning field position for the Carolina Pen from the 43 yard line. And off goes to Derek Moore, who's finally brought down by Rod Stevens. It's a gain of two down to the 41. We've got 355. Clock ticking here in the second quarter. Redskins 10, Carolina 3. And you people that live in Carolina, that's their 10th rush. That's what you, you ordinarily don't see that. You see more running plays. And that was their 10th running play. And I think what's hurt them is the two penalties by their tight end, Pete Metzelars. He had two penalties and chased him into passing situations. And you don't see that much from Metzelars. No, he's, he's too bright to be doing the plays that stupid. 7 down 8 from the 41 yard line. Collins. It is he throws. That was almost kicked off in the middle by the lineman, William Gaines. Incomplete pass. And pressure by uh, Tony Woods. Tony yep. Woods got back. Tony Woods had a big game uh, last year. Now, the coaches like Gaines. They say he's the guy that can throw people around. He's strong enough to push around. And Woods, who scored a touchdown last week against the Rams, against Mark Dennis, getting good pressure on the quarterback. Washington's real problem is stopping the run. They're the number 29 run defense in the NFL. But I think that problem, those stats got ran up early against those Philadelphia in the first half of the season. They're a little better at doing it now. Third down and eight. Collins with the foot to the near side. Caught. For a first down to the 31-yard line. Don Beebe in a gain of 10. And believe it or not, this is an outcut. This is what you don't see with Carolina. And he threw, he, he threw the ball good. It was a little turnout by Beebe. The old Buffalo Bill. The old Buffalo Bill who comes to Carolina. Bill Polian, the former Buffalo GM, is now the GM for the Carolina Panthers. And they, people always go back and try to sign people that they know about. They know what's inside of them. Whether you're a coach, general manager, scout, you go back to people that you believe in. It is a first and ten from the 31. Collins looking one way and throwing the other out of bounds and over the head of Willie Green. Second down. What a good job. That two young quarterbacks, and you call it. That is not where the ball was supposed to go. It was a three-step to his right. Watch him. One, two, three. Ah, don't like it. Everybody's covered. I'm throwing it away. He threw it away because the bump and run. Watch the jam. Now, he told us last night he wasn't going to go to green. So we're not going to try to beat green. We're not even fooling around. We're not even looking over there. Yeah, they've gone to him a couple times ah, today. Ah, he better go back to his original thought last night. Second down and 10. Anthony Johnson in the backfield as Collins guns it low and on a half that almost got to Don Beebe. It's incomplete. When you were at Kansas, they had that first hop rule. Yes, One hop was complete. You can't do that in the NFL. Oh, you can't. No, no. This is not your old school. When you played, a one hopper was okay. <laughs> I hope there's a little elf watching you right now. Oh, let me tell you. I'm, uh, you know what's going to happen? When I get home for Christmas, my stocking's going to be stuffed with Goo Goo Bars. You ever get a Goo Goo Bar for Christmas? I'm going to get you a Goo Goo Bar. I'm working with a Goo Goo Bar. Look at everybody up here shaking. They know Goo Goo Bars. Goo Goo Bar for Christmas if you're good. Blitz is on. Picked up third down and 10. Oh. And the pass caught. Mark Carrier at the 17-yard line of the Washington Redskins with his hands, too. That's a tough catch. Oh, that, you call it. This is a, a low dirt ball, and this is what you have to do for young quarterbacks. you got to have hand selection, you got to go down low, and you got to get your little fingers together pointing towards the ground. Well, which, which little fingers? The, both of them right there. See the hands right there? If the finger, that's called hand selection. If the little fingers aren't touching each other, pointing to the ground, that ends up a dirt ball. Dirt ball. Not, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about that catch. <laughs> Redskins lead it 10 to 3. Panthers on the move. We're at the two minute warning. Christmas Eve in Washington. If we miss our flight, I'm going to stay in this room, and Kevin <laughs> is going to be down here in the basement. They said they they said that. Uh, uh, I get to stay with the big guys, and you get to stay down there with the vacuum cleaner in that's the White House. That's where I belong. There's <laughs> a good chance you won't make it home for Christmas, and your wife feels good about it. Carolina with their deepest penetration today. First down and 10 yards to go. Christian can lasso the pass at the 17. Number by James Washington, who already has an interception today. They're bringing the ball out in a hurry to the three-man side. The wideouts went down inside to run a pick, and Christian ran to the flat. 
and, and it wasn't a good throw. He just reached up with one hand, and Christian's a good receiver, but for some reason, the quarterback feels he's got to bring the ball out in a hurry. Second down and 10 from the 17. Three wide receivers for Terry Collins. And the handoff to Christian. Bulldozing his way inside the 15, near the 10-yard line. And about a yard shy of a first down. Marv gets that James Washington at the stop. Watch the vision. He starts this way and cuts. This is the, the all-time leading rusher until this year at Northwestern University. Watch him bounce outside. Look at the eyes. Now it takes a full grown-up to get him down. You got to love that guy. They got two good backs. Dockers halftime is coming up from Hollywood with J.B., Howie, Terry, and Jimmy. Scores and highlights and the all-important playoff picture breakdown. And J.B. He's probably got on his new Dockers. When I was out there, he was wearing Dockers that had pleats on. Only pleats for J.B. He's a pleated type guy. 111 remaining in the first half and a timeout taken by Carolina. Carolina's on the move. The Redskins have scored 10 unanswered points as we take a look at some of our Fox crew. Even on Christmas Eve, we enlist Santa. As soon as this game is over, my buddy Kevin is getting in the sleigh and trying to get back to Kansas. He has no chance with Delta, so he's going <laughs> with Santa. <laughs> Third down and two, ninth play of the drive. Carolina just burned their first time out of the half. Anthony Johnson's in the backfield. Collins. And knocked away. Looking for Green. Flag thrown. It'll be first and goal to go. Daryl Green was covering Willie Green. And it's funny. They told us they would not go to Green. And like you said earlier, they are going to Green. And last night's meeting, they, that was not the plan. And he just looked to one guy. It was one on one. Oh, he grabbed him by the face. Eight on the defense. Yeah. That's the first down. He accidentally got his cage. If he's looking at the ball, it's okay, but his back is still to the ball. Yeah, he, he can't hit him in the head. Can't hit him in the head even if he's looking for the ball. And that was too bad. That was not intentional, I don't believe. Redskins, Although, the least penalized team in the NFL. Used to be Chicago always had that. First and goal for the two. Howard Griffin. Wow. Buried by Stevens. And Marcus Pat, 53. Now this was a full-time hit. This, this crowd, we have some no-shows here, but the crowd that's here is appreciating this good hit. They are cheering and hollering. Oh, the and even on Christmas Eve, there are some presents being handed out here at RFK. Good hitting. Now they got a dog, a blitz on. No place to go. Second goal for Moore. And he's to the one. Richard and Ken Harvey shut the door. And he bounced that one out. He tried to go over right tackle. And he hurt and he jerked. And he went over to the right. And that's where the pro bowler, Ken Harvey, going for a second consecutive year, made the stop as Kerry Collins goes to discuss things on the sideline. Watch it here. Nothing there. He looks. He bangs his own man in the back. Jumps outside. Chance of defense on Christmas Eve in Washington with the Redskins leading by seven. It'll be third down and goal for Carolina. 11th play of the Panther drive. They are inside the Redskin one. 25 seconds left. Panthers have one timeout left. Derek Moore, touchdown Carolina. Boy, they blew him out on that one. And some shoving after the play. Mike going out at the five-yard line. Not right there, but right there and you see the remnants of it I'm impressed with both teams playing this hard and and ne neither one wants to lose this last game look at 99 up and over Rod Stevens 
What do you call that flat back running? He got his got his pads under his pads, and you call a jump to jumper with 99 was trying to do there. Rod Stevens is go over the top and whack. Casey will put the extra point through, and he oh. ties the game at 10 Not a big fight going now. Ten yard line, another fight broke out. They had to get separated by the refereeing crew. I saw a uh, guy take one to the chops on that one. That was a better uh, punch than you had at your fight. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson had some good ones. Would you get in the ring with Mike for a million dollars? You were there. You saw him live. I don't think I would. I'll tell you what, though, I go on the football field with Derek Moore. Put him on your side, and you got a chance. This game is presented by authority of the NFL, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the Washington Redskins and the NFL is strictly prohibited. As you see, Jim Hannafin, who's done a great job with the Redskin offensive line this year, talking with Norv Turner. We're tied at 10. Carolina comes back to tie just before halftime with 22 seconds remaining. So Carolina trying to become the first expansion team to finish 500 has tied the game at 10. And here's the kickoff by John Casey. Trying to keep it away from Mitchell. And they do that by kicking it short. And enough back is taking the ball out to the 42-yard line. It was 36, William Bell. And we're down to 17 seconds left in the half. But the Redskins do have all their timeouts left. Dodgers halftime is on deck, so stay tuned. JB and Terry take a look at the scores, the highlights, and the playoff picture. Redskins from their own 44. First down of 10 yards to go. Barat so far through the air is 5 of 10. And on first 10, first and 10 throws to Henry Ellard incomplete at about the 40 yard line. Covered by Rod Smith. It'll be second down. 12 Rod. seconds to play. Rod Smith comes in in the nickel situation for the pan. When you have a Rod Smith and a Bubba McDowell not starting on your defensive team, which the Panthers do, they come in in these situations. You got a pretty good, pretty good personnel on defense. Because a Rod Smith can play, a Bubba McDowell can play, and the Panthers are now so good on defense that they're just part-time players. Second down and 10. Barat. Downfield and juggled by Westbrook and dropped. At the 35. Drilled by Pat Terrell. And that's Pat Terrell. That's why you gotta love the safeties on the Panthers. And this is in field goal range. Westbrook has to realize this gives you the lead. You have to hang on to this. Oh, he you have no reason to jump off the ground when the ball's in your stomach. That, that's making a decision before the ball gets in. Seven seconds left. Farad has missed his last five passes. Third down and ten. But you can't call that last one a miss on him. That's a miss on Westbrook. Good block. You know what it's oh. batted down right in the middle. Getting in the way of it was Sean King, a rookie. Incomplete pass with three seconds to play in the half. He, he had no penetration. He didn't get across the line of scrimmage. He's getting double teamed, but he's tall. He jumps. Just watch her down. You only get one chance, so the Westbrook's got to make the catch. Then you're in field goal range, and all of a sudden you go in at halftime feeling good about yourself. Well, this should be the final play of the half. It is fourth down. Ten to go, and the handoff goes to Brian Mitchell. With the good block ahead, he works his way to the 45, and that'll be our final play of the first half. So the Redskins were down 3-0, came back to score 10 unanswered points, and then Carolina came back to tie it on a touchdown run by Derek Moore. We're tied at 10 at halftime. Stay tuned for the Dockers halftime. After this, from your local Fox station. Holiday edition of the Dockers Halftime, along with Terry Bradshaw. I'm James Brown. Halftime of the game you're watching. Right now, all knotted up at 10. Gus Verratt, the man at the helm for the Washington Redskins. Big game of the day, San Francisco and Atlanta. Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice had not attempted a pass since 1988, but on this reverse, 
Fumbles the handoff, then turns and fires 41 yards to J.J. Stokes as the 49ers are up by two touchdowns. Then Jerry Rice on this play will set. He sets the single-season yardage, breaking Charlie Hennigan's record that was set in 1961. Congratulations, Jerry. But the 49ers are still leading 21 to 10. Bobby Hebert, he is knocked out by Harris. Got a sprained neck. Leaves. This is bad news for the 49ers because in comes Bobby Hebert, the Cajun rifle. Harris Mathis. There's one touchdown. It's 27 to 28 after this play. Hebert finds time. Turns. Mathis, where are you? Here I am. 10-yard line. Bounces to the outside. Scoots into the end zone. The Falcons go for two. Don't make it. Lead by one. And then Steve Young comes in, tries to rally the 49ers. Steve Young finds, turns, Kevin Ross, where are you? Here I am, Terry, there's four of us here, makes the interception, and congratulations, Atlanta Falcons, with this upset of the 49ers. They are in the playoffs and travel to Lambeau Field. Next Sunday on Fox, pregame show starts at 12. What did you have in that I green puff? All right, let's move along here. Philadelphia and Chicago, the Bears win it, but it's for naught. They are out of the playoffs. Eagles lose it 20 to 14. Minnesota and Cincinnati. Yes, indeed, the Vikings are out as well. They lose to Cincinnati. Jeff Blake came and rallied the squad back and looked impressive. Green Bay and Pittsburgh. Yes, Brett Favre says, where's my man? Brooks, here I am, Terry, down in the middle of the football field. Pack, 14 to 3. Steelers rally back. Yancey Thigpen, bottom left of your screen. He comes wide open. Potential winning touchdown. Whoa, drops it. Pittsburgh 19, Green Bay 24. Congratulations, Packers, as they host the Falcons next week in the playoffs. Oh, you gave us a Jimmy Johnson read. Low score first. All right, so here's the NFC playoff picture. <laughs> Keep in mind now, next Sunday, right here on Fox, Atlanta at Green Bay, and it all gets started with the pregame show at 12 noon, Detroit and Philadelphia playoff game that Saturday, of course, elsewhere. All right, let's move along here. Yes, indeed. Who is this, Terry? Hammer McBad over. Look at this. Takes opening kickoff, sprints up the middle, cuts to the left, and now he's off and running. 89 yards, JB. Crowd's going crazy. Kansas City looking to go 13-3. and three. Oh, baby. They get it. There it is. 26-3. Kansas City Chiefs have the home field advantage in the playoffs in the AFC. Congratulations, Chiefs. And Seattle is out. Denver and Oakland all tied at 14. Oakland has control of its own destiny relative to the postseason derby. As we look at the Dolphins beating up on St. Louis 27-12. That at halftime, Don Shula trying to do it. All right, AFC playoff picture looks like this. The wild card games, if Oakland wins, then Indianapolis will be at Buffalo. Oakland will be at San Diego. If the Raiders lose, then the picture changes and Miami will be at Buffalo, Indianapolis at San Diego. Final scores to pass along to you. The Saints beat up on the Jets 12, nothing good news, no snowballs thrown at the Meadowlands. And we move along to the next score and see that Buffalo lost to Houston 28 to 17. And Cleveland dropped one to Jacksonville 24 21. That means the New York Jets get the first pick in the draft. All right, Atlanta at Green Bay. You talked about Atlanta's successful formula today with trips, formations that Three they ran. Three receivers to one side, exactly. one to the other. What do you expect against Green Bay? Well, you know, the Green Bay Packers in Lam Lambeau Field, Atlanta taken up there with those four wide receivers. I am going to ask myself this question right now. Jeff George had a tremendous year, over 4,000 yards passing. Going up there, Bobby A. Bear, who was the last quarterback to quarterback the Falcons, to an upset victory over the 49ers, Bobby A. Bear. With the sprained neck that George has right now, you would have to think A. Bear will get the nod but if George can play, I'm sure that you're going to see him quarterbacking up in cold Lambeau Field. Well, we've got the second half coming. Let's do it right to the folks here. We've enjoyed it. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good. We'll return to RFK Stadium for the start of the second half after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Christmas Eve at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. I just had a little ceremony for some kids here in Washington that may not get the benefits of a well-rounded Christmas, so they had a little gift ceremony for them, which was very nice. This is our gift to you, Jerry Glanville. <laughs> I like what they did. They made the kids run to get their right, gifts. It right. was sort of a sprint. I thought of, of you and me running to get our 
get our Christmas gifts. What's your wife getting you this year, Dina? We'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, the first half was an interesting one. We're tied at 10 at the halftime between Carolina and Washington. Carolina was up 3-0. Redskins moved downfield on this reverse 17-yard gain by Leslie Shepard. And watch the block by Gus Verratt. Tries to lead him in for the touchdown and just gets to the one-yard line, but they scored. And then a couple plays later, it was Terry Allen with his ninth touchdown of the season. Up and over. He left at the two-and-a-half-yard line and landed in the end zone. And then Carolina came back to tie it just before the half. This was straight ahead. No fair dodging. Derek Moore, he's the guy. So that tied the game at 10 just before the half. Gus Farrakh took a couple shots in that first half, but he is starting today in place of the injured Keith Schuler. And you see the numbers from the quarterbacks today. Collins does have a pick. And not numbers that would send you to Canton, to the Hall of Fame. Uh, neither quarterback, uh, uh, you know, really dominating this game, but both teams playing hard. Uh, got some no-shows in the stadium, but a good noisy crowd. The crowd is into it. The people that did show up, kind of fun to be here. And so we uh, watch Terry Allen come back out onto the field. He is a player that has 37 yards, had over 70 last week in St. Louis, and should he get another 100 yards, he will become the all-time single-season leading rusher for the Washington Redskins and Derek Moore you know there was a time this year and he was just a little over 600 yards on the season 27 today but there was a time Jerry where Moore was midway through the year looking at a thousand yards and and right after they were talking about that with him they thought his year was over with a knee injury and said that he'd be lost for the season Derek Moore would be and he'd go to surgery but uh, he's come back uh, gave that thing a rest and has come back and helping the team again you just saw Dwight Stone a second ago there's Howard Griffith was starting at the fullback earlier in the season. Now Bob Christian has replaced him. Eddie Murray will be kicking off. Pete Metzelars is ready, and here we go, starting the second half from Washington. Don Beebe inside the 10-yard line for Carolina, and he's got to see if he can get outside. A Christian block, and he's by the 35 and to the 37-yard line. Brought down eventually by Derek Brownlow, and through 30 minutes of football, here are the numbers for the Panthers and the Redskins. And total yardage, very close, like the score is, 121 to 111. 16 rushes to 14, so look at this. That's why it's a tied-up ball game. Just about everything's equal. Both defenses dominating the game. Turnover was a Washington interception by James Washington, which was turned into three points on a 29-yard field goal by Eddie Murray. So we begin the third quarter, first down and 10 yards to go from the 37-yard line. Play action by Collins, who throws to a Christian, who works his way to the 43, and picks up five on the play. Ken Harvey finally trailed him down. Well, they made up their mind about four days ago. They're going to keep running this play till it works. This, this is the one they've dropped. This is the one we had to make a circus catch. But with the motion coming across, it's the blocking back out into the flat. So it's it's Christian, and they keep on trying it. That's their plan for the day seen a lot of it. Second down and four. Four is in the backfield. Metzelars is 88. And Derek Moore. Hand off. The first down run and he pounds his way to the 49. And that's Derek Moore being led by Bob Christian. Pretty good combination. Not bad. If you're a, if you're a Panther fan and you got to know these two well, that time they got Howard Griffin in there blocking for him. I don't know Howard personally like I do uh, Christian, but they're hard-working people on this Panther team. Next year now, you get to go to your new stadium, which I've been in. The Panther Stadium in Charlotte is, is going to be the best facility in the National Football League. Play action on first and ten by Collins going deep for Willie Green, who he hit on an 89-yard touchdown pass last week against Atlanta. Coverage there by Tom Carter, who himself was a big player last week. Number 25 for the Redskins. He picked off a Mark Rippin pass and went 51 yards on a touchdown at the Trans World Dome in St. Louis. And he, he's a proud new father. He's got a sweet, sweet old daughter, Madison. And he remembers when he was going to high school, he, he used to watch Carrier play at Tampa Bay. 
He said he was kind of thrilled to have a chance to play against a guy that used to be his high school hero. Second down and 10. Anthony Johnson getting a block on the way. Quickly evaporates. He takes it by midfield to the 49-yard line of Carolina. Forced out of bounds by Stanley Richard, the former San Diego Charger. I saw Stanley Richard come flying up there. There's Frank Garcia, the guard. And he smothered Daryl Green. Daryl Green did the only thing you do when you get a big lineman coming at a little DB, you got to go down low and try to late cut him. Player down for the Redskins, 13-19, third quarter. We take a timeout. Well, there are a few cities as pretty as this during the holiday season. Daryl Green was the player down. He Hopefully we'll get back in. Scott Turner takes his place. Third down and eight yards to go. Carolina and Washington tied at 10. From the 49, Collins has to get down to the 41. It's Anthony Johnson, who is timing. Walked down by Daryl Pounds, who is the rookie from Nickel State. And they stop him, and they force Carolina to punt. Well, the biggest difference is, is the Redskins are 97% zone. This is covered two. All zone. Anything comes to the flat. Tom Carter should make the play. Watch him here. He goes for the pick. He's sitting in there. Ah, I should have whacked. Not a good play by Tom. Should have played it better. The Redskins have become mostly all zone. They dogged a little bit earlier, but they're not doing that now. Carolina to punt. Redskins have the best overall special teams in the NFL. Mitchell will let this bounce to the seven-yard line. Christian downed it after the 37-yard punt. Christmas in Washington. Redskins and Panthers. Redskins and Panthers are tied at 10. We're early in the third quarter. Washington about ready to get their worst beginning starting position at their own nine. Quarterback Gus Farratt starting today in place of the injured Heath Schuler. We haven't seen that arm used like we normally do when Gus is in there. Nothing real deep. Terry Allen, which produces about four to five yards. Old defense had a hand in there. You know, for Gus Farad, there were reports in particular in the Washington Post, their beat writer David Aldridge had said that sources told him that Farad's preparation and his football mind not as sharp the last couple weeks, and the Redskins coaches reportedly were a little bit ticked off about that. But yet, when we talked to the head coach, he denied that. He says, uh, Gus is a guy that comes in, works as hard as he can work every day, and said the reports, uh, uh, you know, weren't true, so there's two opinions. Second down and five, Terry Allen. Boy, he was hit high that time by Carlton Bailey and finally brought down about two yards shy of the first down. Well, there's no doubt, Jerry, that a good performance by Farratt today may go a long way in figuring out who's going to be the starter going into the 96 season. I think the, because of the draft, there's not good quarterbacks in this draft. And uh, both of these people... Uh, both uh, Schuler and Farratt would be much better than anybody you could draft. So if you're if you're with the Rams or you're with some other clubs that need a quarterback, uh, maybe a good deal will come up for the Redskins for one of their good young ones. Farratt is a free agent after next season. Skins can buy out the contract of Schuler after next year. And on uh, third down and two, Terry Allen is going to be a bit shy of the first down. Nice play by the entire Panther defensive team. They they pinched everybody down to the inside gaps. Redskins have to punt. Washington has missed their last five first downs. Their offense is bogging down just a bit. Matt Turk is once again on the field to punt for a third time today. And he was a great find, Matt Turk. A big punter. Much like the one they had last year. 242-pound punter. Mark Carrier deep back. This will go high and hang and out of bounds at about the 45-yard line of Carolina. So Carolina will get it back. 10-10 remaining in the third. That was a 38-yard punt. Rushing touchdowns for both the Carolina Panthers and the Redskins were tied at 10 in stages of the third quarter. The best record over the last 10 games, and you see the expansion Panthers right up there with the likes of Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Kansas City. They're all going to the playoffs with the exception of the Carolinas. If they didn't start 0-5, what a year they would have had. The Redskins have playing some pretty good defense themselves since the midway portion of the season. 
first and ten handoff to Derek Moore finds nothing. Rod Stevens, Marv Gisfatten were there to slam him. And Patton has really improved the last half of this season. Patton comes from the Buffalo Bills, where he played besides some great ones up in Buffalo. Comes from a football family. Some UCLA heritage there. No chance at all for Derek Moore. They're in the backfield penetrating as he was getting the ball. Couple tight ends. Second down, 11 yards to go from the 43 yard line. Quarterback Kerry Collins, who throws a pass which is dropped by Metzelars. And here is what's changed for the Redskins. We're going to show you the entire secondary. It's all cover two, flat, flat, curl, hook, deep, deep, no man to man, nothing cheap, nothing deep. Look how they got everything just shut right off. Now the downside is if you run the ball versus cover two, there's one less person to stop the run. Kerry Collins, who turns 23 in about a week. <laughs> On third downs, five of six. Third and 11 right now. He's got to get to the 47-yard line. There goes a flag, and Collins swings a pass to the near side, and it's incomplete to Don Beebe. Covered by Tom Carter on the corner. Like I said, flags thrown on both sides of the field. Looked like a Redskin left early. And one thing about uh, Kerry Collins, we talked to him. I said, what, how, how long has your first year as a rookie been? On the defense, number 98. That's a five-yard penalty, still third down. And Kerry Collins told me it's like four college seasons on mental preparation. There's the jump. Tony Woods. Yeah, they inserted him week four. That's right. He said, with the mental preparation and the emotions, I'm wore out, and I'm going to Aspen, Colorado, and take a break. Third down and six for Collins, and the pass is behind Don Beebe, and incomplete. And so the Carolina Panthers have got a punt. Now for McDonald's game break, back to Hollywood, and our good friend James Brown. Hey, Kevin, the Steelers had a chance to beat the Packers today. Here's the last play. O'Donnell to a wide-open Yancey Dixon. Couldn't find the handle. Green Bay holds on, and the Packers will host the Falcons next week, Sunday, right here on Fox. Starts with the pregame at noon. Back to Kevin and Jerry. And the interesting thing about Yancey Thickpen, he set a single-season receiving record today for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The most catch is, uh, in a season by any Steeler wide receiver, and it's dropped by Washington, and it's loose inside the 20. And finally recovered by the Redskins, they say. So at the bottom of that pile appears to be Scott Turner and a little gift on Christmas Eve for Norm Turner. Well, when you come visit Washington, D.C., there's this little area in Alexandria, Virginia, called Old Town. And it's got quaint shops, great restaurants, some very historic homes, and a great place to visit, which is uh, just on the other side of National Airport. We are on the other side of the Capitol in what is a great city, tremendous hospitality, and this is one city that really gets in the spirit of the season. We've had a great, well, great visit here this this trip and, and all the trips. season. Yeah, I'd like to live here. Other than that, we're lost most of the time. That where it's it is hard to find. It's hard to around. find your way around. Well, Gus Farad hopes he finds his way into the end zone. He's got a first down and ten, and he guns a pass down the Ooh. middle, which is almost picked off by Tim McIver. An incomplete pass, and Farrat now is struggling. He has missed his last seven after beginning five of seven throwing the ball. And McIver is cutting underneath. He's got people over the top. What a nice play by McIver laying out. And it was a 22-man, which means he had that guy man-to-man, -man, but he had help over the top. McIver bounces along the right side from team to team to team. Well, and you know what people don't realize about McIver? He works so hard. When you have him on your team and you go to practice, he tries to play. He tries to get ready every single day. Second down and 10. Ryan Mitchell brought down by McIver, an original draft pick back in the mid-'80s by the San Francisco 49ers. And a couple yards shy of the first down is Brian Mitchell. But McIver, he was with Pittsburgh last year, and, of course, he was beat deep late in that playoff game against San Diego for the Steelers. And one year with us, with the Falcons, I think... Uh, I think Dion led the league in interceptions. I think McCarr was second. Right. Had two corners that uh, really got us to the playoffs. We never would have got there without either one of them. He is flamboyant, isn't he? Oh, he is. We're down at two. Trying to get to the 28. 
Blitzes on from the corner. Perot, the quick throw, and it hit the side of someone's helmet. And Sean King, 96. And McGuire, they were in a four deep. In the, and again, when they ran the slant, the ball got tipped, but McGuire's inside on the slant before the receiver. McGuire, you got to be careful with an old vet that'll guess and take a chance, and that's what McGuire will do. Watch him get inside. Watch McGuire. Look at him. They were going to hammer that. That ball came came out. They'd have been disappointed. Around the fourth, three and out for the Redskins, and punt number five coming up for Matt Turk. Be back for Carolina. Mark Terry. Great special teams covered by the number one coverage unit in the NFL, brought down by Daryl Pounds. It was a punt of 44 yards, a loss of four on the return. Carolina will get it again. Ho, ho, ho. No one plays special teams better in the NFL than the Redskins special teams. Watch Darrell Pounds gets pushed out of bounds, and he follows a rule. You have to return to the field of play as soon as you can, so it's legal for him to come right back and make this great tackle. Rod Smith doing a good job trying to hold him up. Each team has had it twice here in the second half, and each team has punted both times. So four possessions, four straight punts. Collins right to work on first and ten, pocket collapsing, and he is crushed. Down at the 31-yard line, picking up three, and Collins complaining that when he goes feet first, that gives immunity to the quarterback. That's a good point. He is sliding there, and he's wondering, why can people hit me if I'm going feet first? And Ken Harvey didn't just hit him. He drilled him. I, mean, I think he's got a good... Uh, Got a good question here, waiting for a good answer. I'd have to say uh, he's got a good argument. If they're going to hit you when you slide, don't bother sliding. It has not been a good offensive end for the Carolina Panthers. Now faced with second down and seven, just beyond the 30 yard line. Derek Moore sent up the middle, those quick, choppy steps, and then shooting up the middle and picks up a nice gain of about four. Down to the 35 and brought down again by Ken Harvey. For some reason, the Panthers have got chased, they're, they're chased away from what they do, and that's run the football and pound it and pound it. And they just haven't gotten into that groove today yet. And with the score the way it is, they still have a chance to return to their game plan. Panthers have won seven of their last ten games. Ron Lynn, their defensive coordinator. He's the best man of Don Capers' wedding. And Capers is the head coach of Carolina. Four down at three. His arm was hit, but the wobbly pass is caught by Mark Carrier at the 42-yard line. Pressure up the middle from Mark Boutte. In fact, Ron Lynn actually recruited Don Capers to college, coached him, and was the recruiter. Here's, here's the defensive coordinator for the Redskins. He recruited Don Capers to college. Brought him there on an athletic scholarship, and then when Dom got married, this was the best man at the at the at the wedding. And now they're fighting each other on Christmas. On Christmas. <laughs> that is the first ten out of the 42-yard line. Collins always given all kinds of time and going deep down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Willie Green covered by Scott Turner, who's taking the place of the injured Daryl Green for the Redskins. Scott Turner is a rookie from Illinois in a seventh round pick. And not a good throw. This ball hung and hung. This had way too much air. You can see everybody's nice, nice body control. Though. Nice. He actually turns his, he turns his hips, drops his head, turns down this way and bats. He actually could have intercepted that thing. But the ball was not a good throw. To fill some big shoes, too. Darrell Green's had a pretty good career with the Redskins. And the thing that Darrell Green, re I respect now, is he plays the run good now. Second down and ten. Bob Christian chugging up the middle on that second down call and got as far as the 44. Marcus Patton, Rod Stevens, tag team there. The Carolina Panthers today, Jerry, have rushed for only 63 yards. And that's not how they want to play. And you go back to the Redskins. When they're having a good day, Terry Allen's running the football. So both defenses have mustered it up, and I'm impressed with how hard everybody's playing on both defenses. They're not taking this off and, and saying the year's over. They're, they're all trying to play. Redskins will not finish in the cellar of the NFC East this year, so they're fighting to improve. Carolina trying to go 
eight. And here's a third down at eight and a pass a little bit high and wide for Willie Green. It's incomplete. They have thrown seven balls to Willie Green. He's only made one catch today. And how good are these teams? You got to remember this Redskin defense. Watch the pressure on the quarterback. Beat the Cowboys twice. And you got to remember the Carolina Panthers. They beat the 49ers and they beat Atlanta. So they, they're both close to being playoff teams. Barnhart the punt. Mitchell will let it bounce. Oh, and it takes a great Carolina bounce. Out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Mr. and Mrs. Claus should be loading up their sleigh. It'll be a good one as the Falcons, who had a big upset today over San Francisco, take on Green Bay and going deep for Henry Ellard. A double move. The quarterback did a fake pump, and this is the Gus Ferrat that we know. You get him in the game, you get a chance for it. There's the fake pump. Out and up. And Terrell saved the day. That's a touchdown without Terrell chasing him down. The second oldest player in the National Football League finally brought down by a young secondary of Carolina. And Poole, like we said, he'll take a chance. He'll squat on a route because he's got such good speed. I don't think Poole is going to catch him. Pat Terrell saved the day or it was going to be a touchdown. A season-long catch, 59 yards. And for Rots, a deep ball throw. And there's Poole who's had a good year. What did you say in the open? The one difference between Schuler and Gus Farad starting today is that Farad has a better long ball. Farad can push the ball down the field for the big play. The different game plans too, Jerry. Norm Turner, there's, you see Keith Schuler, but Norm Turner has said that with Schuler you prepare one way, with Farad you prepare another way. They both have their strengths, and I think they both have a good chance to have a good career. But yeah, it's hard to keep two young guys. No, nobody wants to sit on the bench. So I think one of these quarterbacks will be playing for somebody else. And just as easily, they could both be here next year, too. I mean, if you're a coach and you're coaching the league, you take either one of them and say, let's go. Interesting dilemma. Allen's in the backfield. First down and 10 yards to go. Redskins at the 34. And the end around to Michael Westbrook with the seam. Westbrook with one to beat. And he's down to the one-yard line. Pat Terrell makes the touchdown saving grab. A 33-yard gain. And the second end around today by the Washington Redskins. And Ray Brown leading it. The guard pull lot. And you talk about speed. Now you know why he's picked first. Great speed. And if they don't have a Pat Terrell, this is a touchdown. Pat Terrell is saving a touchdown every series. This is gone. I don't know of another safety other than Pat Terrell that would have stopped that from being a touchdown. Reverse last week in St. Louis. Two reverses today. First and goal. Play clock down to two. Terry Allen going for his second touchdown today. He got it. Trey Johnson. The people inside are all 300 pounds. Watch him pull. Follow Ray Brown. I'm going up in the hole. Logan going in the hole first. Here's Ray Brown. Touchdown. A three play, 93 yard drive, a minute and 24 seconds off the third quarter clock. And the key that you said, three play drive. You got to have a Gus Ferrat for that. So a pass completion to Henry Ellard of 59 yards, a 33-yard end around to Michael Westbrook sets up the one-yard touchdown run by Terry Allen, his second of the day. And it is 17 to 10 with the extra point from Redskin kicker Eddie Murray. See some of the biggest names in Hollywood make some of the most embarrassing blunders of their careers. Find out what 
ended up on the cutting room floor on Oops, the world's funniest outtakes. Tonight at 7, 6 Central, here on the Fox Television Network. You and I have a couple outtakes <laughs> on that show. <laughs> if they showed our outtakes, that would be a special. Congratulations to the Green Bay Packers today who clinched the Central Division. First time in many, many years that Green Bay will have that home field in the playoffs next week against Atlanta. And for Chicago, they win against Philly, but they lose a shot at the playoffs. Atlanta, a stunning win over San Francisco. And now that opens the door for the Dallas Cowboys, who if they win tomorrow, they have home field in the playoffs because of San Francisco's loss today. If Chicago and Atlanta have the same record, Atlanta had more wins in the division than Chicago. Chicago only had three wins in the division, so that's why they're out. Including two losses to Green Bay. Dwight Stone at the 10-yard line for Carolina. That's his way by the 30, up to the 35-yard line. 3.44 here in the third quarter. Christmas Eve, Daryl Morrison makes the stop. You have to be impressed with the way both teams are playing this game. That's one thing about the National Football League. People say, well, there's nothing to play for. And I'm impressed with everybody in this ballgame playing so hard. Redskins have a chance to double their win total from last year. They went 3-13 and 13, right now at 5-10. and 10. Panthers trying to become the first expansion team to finish 500. Already seven wins is an expansion record. Blair Thomas on first down and 10. Hasn't carried since the first quarter. And he's brought down. Big tackle by James Washington, who already today has an interception. And James Washington's making the tackle. Watch Ken Harvey, the outside linebacker, push this play back. He's on the line of scrimmage to our left as we're looking at this. And he's just shoving that rookie tackle right on back into the play and leaving the, the running back out there by himself. Oh, Blake Brockmeyer, he, Brockmeyer, he found out something on that play. Great play by Ken Hart. Now he's had a nice season, the rookie Brockermeyer. Second down and 11. Collins wants to flip it and then guns it. And it's incomplete. Wanted to throw in the flat to Anthony Johnson. Instead went hard to Mark Carrier and Rod Stevens broke it up. And this defense, everybody thought was a joke after about a month into the season. And have they improved? They just kept getting better and better kept on playing, playing more zone than they ever did. Fourth best since midseason. Fourth best in the NFL since the middle of the year. And Rod Stevens took the, he was in his zone and then took the man in his zone, locked him up. It's called a, a match. It means you're in your zone and you match up with who comes through your zone and swats the ball out. Nice play by 99. Rod Stevens, who was a leading tackler for Seattle the last two seasons, comes here as another high-priced free agent. The player down is Tony Woods. And we didn't mention the Seattle head coach as a candidate for coach of the year, but yeah. I think you have to. Coach Erickson has done a very good job up there, and they began horribly. And, you know, at the floor, they, they had all the injuries, remember, off the field with Warren and Flores and all those people, and they bounced back well. They changed quarterbacks, Myers on the bench, John Freeze, a former Redskin quarterback, well, when, is now up there doing a pretty good job. When we covered the Redskins a year ago, we said they got Freeze, Ferrat, and Schuler. They got three quarterbacks that could really start in the National Football League on the same team with the Redskins. It's obvious we were correct. Christmas Eve in Washington, late third quarter, injury timeout. Terry Collins has a third down and 11, and he's one of his last six throwing the football. Collins with the pocket crumbling, throws wide open. He had a receiver, and it's incomplete to Don Beebe. Landed at his feet. Wow. Was that a touchdown or what? When you all see this one in Carolina, you're going to take your Christmas tree and throw it outside. <laughs> there's nobody, there's nobody going to be on the man just running a slim post. Busted coverage, touchdown. Wow. A punt now coming up for Barnard. Mitchell to the 18, and out of bounds. Flag thrown out the play at the 43-yard line. That was a one-yard return after the 48-yard punt by the former New Orleans Saint punter, Tommy Barnhart. 17 to 10 Redskins, two Terry Allen rushing touchdowns. Penalty is against the Carolina Panthers. On a 
punt play. That's illegal man downfield. They're going to make him punt it over. Well, that's too bad, too, because that was Barnhart's fifth punt inside the 20. Eligible member of the kicking team, number 58, downfield. That's a five-yard penalty, fourth down. We did Carolina early in the season. You thought Barnhart was as good a punter as there is in the National Football League. I really remembered him when he was with New Orleans and punting indoors. I think what's happened, he's probably, uh, you know, a much better punter indoors than what he is, uh, you know, at, uh, at Clemson. Uh, but when you would go down to the Dome or he'd come to your Dome, I was coaching Atlanta, he was as good a punter as we would face. By the way, the new stadium in uh, Charlotte is not a Dome open stadium with a grass field most beautiful stadium i've ever been in so if you got tickets next year for charlotte you'll be in the best stadium i've ever been in. oh you're forgetting about arrowhead i'm not forgetting city. about arrowhead you are <laughs> mitchell fumbles it and then on the turn picks it up and takes it by the 30 breaking tackle after tackle it is beyond the 40 and down at the 42. that's a pretty good return and tackled by the punter and the punter stuck his face on the return man he absolutely hit him We've seen some pretty good tackles by punters this year. Barnhart. Barnhart. Level in one. He goes in there like a football player. And the good lucky bounce. Now watch the punter come in. Come on, punter. Where are you? Right. Look at that. I think technique probably more than anything. He's coming down. There's not a lot of power behind that. <laughs> now watch it. He, he's going to deliver a Christmas blow. He'll never forget. Ooh. There it is. To give you a Christmas ball, you know, we'll never forget. Well, it's kind of sad, you know. This is our last game together for this year. I love you, man. I love you. Thankfully, yeah. <laughs> Darian Connor got a pass. I'm gonna down. miss you. That <laughs> was a first and ten, and second down and ten. <laughs> Maybe they'll give you the Green Bay game next week. Your father, the general manager, up there, and. You're the heir apparent to be the next general manager? Well, he's not quite a general manager. Oh. <laughs> Second down and ten. We, did we promote him again? Terry yeah. Allen trying to cut the corner. And he's out to the 45. Carlton Bailey, former Buffalo Bill and New York Giant, was there to bring down Terry Allen. And what you like about the Panthers' defense, Bailey, one of his best years. Sam Mills, one of his best years. And, and uh, Greg Cragen, the nose tackle, one of his why you know it, it's just a credit to the coaching staff that all these people came together and have had the best years they've had in a long time and bill poley and the guy that really put it all together for him. he knows how to pick players they know how to go find people that have character along with ability third down and eight for Farad with pretty good time and he finds westbrook with a great catch inside the 25 yard line A great catch on a high throw. Wasn't the best throw in the world, but Farad can put her down there. And here's their number one pick against Rod Smith. That's good for 32 yards. That's nice as good catch. as you'll see, huh? What a nice catch. And the safety held Bubba McDowell getting there a little bit late. And Rod Smith underneath. 32 yards to Westbrook. First and 10 handoff to Terry Allen. Stepping his way by the 20 to the 19. He'll pick up four on the play. Sam Mills. Leading tackle. Makes the grab right there. We haven't talked a lot about Sam today. Watch it. He goes in. He doesn't like it, and he cuts right off. No, he, Wham. Logan's got the block. Comes right out. And like you said, Sam Mills gets off the block that Logan had. Comes all the way. Jumps over the center. and makes the tackle. Mills had an interception last week. Two tackles today. Second down and six for Rock Westbrook. And he's shy of the first down. That's as far as the 14. Had to get to the 13-yard line, and Carlton Bailey brought him down. And that's Gus's best throw. That was a National Football League throw. What'd you like about it? Watch the RPMs. Watch the ball rotate. And it's not his first read. It's a play action. He doesn't like that, doesn't like that. He finds that, and look at that ball. That's a good, hard throw that only his man could touch the football. Looked like he stepped into the pass, too. I, I tell you what, he's going to get better and better, and both quarterbacks will get better if they get the play. Now, Pat Terrell, I think, is a dynamite. They can't afford to lose him. I hope he comes back in the next play. 
Terrell had an interception in the end zone last week. Terrell, which is a big one against Terrell Atlanta. Terrell and uh, Brett Maxey, safeties like that. We talk about the Rams' safeties, and you got to talk about the safeties that play for the Panthers. There's Sam Mills, 51. Coach on the field. Denied the Pro Bowl, Jerry. Had been a five-time Pro Bowl selection. Has had as good a year this year as he's ever had. A career high in interceptions. A career high in sacks. Over four. Yet he didn't make it. Y you wonder. You wonder how they get uh, with his reputation. You wonder how they gets missed. Six forced fumbles. Four fumble recoveries. What we five the, interceptions. What did we ask the coach yesterday in the meeting? The MVP of the season. He said there was time. It was funny. We said, "What did he say about?" It? He said, "Well, oh, there's some years I made it when I shouldn't." All he, he, he so that guy's the MVP of this team. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is 17-10. Redskins will return to RFK after these words from your local Fox station. We begin the fourth quarter from RFK on Christmas Eve. Redskins by 7, 17-10. Washington a chance to double their win total from a year ago. They've won two of their last three. Carolina. They've won 7 of 10 after starting 0-5, and, and they're trying to finish the season at 500. Third down and one. And inside the 15, needing to get to the 14, was the swirling running back, Terry Allen. Watch Ray Brown. When, when, it, when the goal gets tough for the Redskins, Ray Brown is going to take you to what's happening. He's got the kick out, and Logan's got the inside fill, but the back couldn't wait. Terry Allen lost his patience and ducked up inside. Probably should have followed uh, Logan on that play. They'll probably be short of a first down by half the length of a football. It'll be fourth down and that far to go. In fact, the full length of a football. Don Capers has relied on his defense, and Norm Turner's got to get that offense another half yard. They're going to kick the field goal. You like that, call? Yeah, you're up by seven. Make the enemy score twice. If it's under a yard, then I'd probably go for it. I think it was under a yard. Well, if it's under a yard, you lay it out there. It's easy to make that call sitting up here. It is. It's a lot easier. But to win the game, you, you, you go up ten. Eddie Murray has kicked a 29-yard field goal already. This will be a 32-yard attempt. What a nice addition. He has been to the Redskins. No good. What? Did it go through? <laughs> I thought it hit. Did it hit? Yes, he hit it. <laughs> it was a good. Yeah, he also broke a record with that. Hey, I'll do the play-by-play. -play okay, now. okay. <laughs> we'll talk about Eddie Murray when we come back. Twenty to ten, Washington. He wants the ball. <laughs> and the kickoff by Eddie Murray after he just booted one 32 yards. To give the Redskins a 10-point lead on Beanie on the run, using the sideline and by the 34, knocked out of bounds at the 35. Eddie Murray with that kick becomes fourth all-time in the history of the NFL, passing Pat Leahy, the former great kicker with the Jets. In terms of scoring, you can see as Lowry, Stenerud, and Blanda ahead of him. Stenerud and Blanda, of course, both retired, both in the Hall of Fame. Lowry, I would assume, is headed that way. And he still lives in Detroit. He was a great kicker for the Lions. And as soon as the season's over, he'll go back to his home in Detroit, Michigan. First down and 10 yards to go for Collins with the quick throw. And it's caught by Christian. And he picks up a gain of nine on the sideline. Right now for McDonald's game break, let's go back to Hollywood. And here's James Brown. All right, for those who may not have seen it, this was the play that won it for the Falcons and put them into the playoffs. Bobby A. Bear in relief of the injured Jeff George finds Terrence Mathis with that seed. Good movement. Mathis takes it across, and Atlanta holds on for the one-point lead. So Atlanta will play Green Bay playoffs this weekend on Fox pregame show at noon. Kevin and Jerry, you guys are having simply too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. Here's the end around of the flea flicker going from Carrier to Collins, who throws downfield, and it's incomplete. Almost hit off by Tom Carter. Overthrew that one. Tom Carter had a better shot at the ball than anybody. This is how the Rams opened up last last yes, week. Yes, with a flea flicker and a big, big, big play cover. completion. The deep man was covered, so this was not his first choice. 
going for Blair Thomas, and the running back. Yeah, Blair didn't have any chance unless he was about a foot taller. He's got to work on his height. Third down and one. Got to get to the 45. Derek Moore set up the middle. Moore finds the first down by the 50 into the 48. And we're in the fourth quarter with the Panthers down by 10. They've got to move the ball. And bobbing and weaving, perking and jerking. You like him? I like him. Watch him slither. There's nothing big here. Look at that crowd. Get the guard out of the way. Gets hit on the leg. Positive yardage guy. He was the guy that went in and carried the ball at Detroit on short yardage, and they would bench Barry Sanders. And Detroit still has not found a replacement for him. One as a free agent to San Francisco this past offseason, San Francisco cut it. First down and 10. Four again. Hurdles the defender and picks up three to the 45. Yeah, the most amazing story I think about him this year was the knee injury that more or less would have sidelined a lot of players. Surgery was recommended. He said, no worries. I'll rehab it myself. I want to finish out this season. And finish he has. Took, uh, I don't know what it was, about four weeks off uh, without surgery and came back and is their best runner again. Second down and seven. Collins hit as he throws, and it's almost picked off by Stevens. On a pass intended down the middle for the tight end, Metzelars. It's third down. When the tight end's in the zone, the outside, watch the linebacker that's matching up. He's playing a man when he comes into his zone. That's Rod Stevens. You've seen it three times now. It's zone coverage, but it's a zone matchup. And that means when a man's in your zone, go clamp him down and play tight. No tight end catches today for Carolina. Third down and seven to go from the 45. Collins almost picked off again by two different deep back defenders. Willie Green was in the side somewhere of Collins. And it's incomplete. Collins is really struggling in the second half. And it's the four deep that's getting him. What, what they're playing is, is a four deep zone and the young quarterbacks, they don't see this in college. They don't see much of this. And right now, they're having a hard time cracking it. He's two of his last 11, speaking of Collins. A good move by Ron Lynn on the defensive coordinator sideline of the Redskins. Make that change. Mitchell deep back, number 30. Barnhart the punt. He's got five already today inside the 20. Make it six. As it's down at the four. Ferenies downs the ball. Barnhart has had a spectacular Christmas Eve. Fox Tuesday night movie. Pete Delonzo, one of our great cameramen on this Fox crew, has done a sensational job all season long. And a handoff going to Terry Allen. This is the third start, by the way, inside the 10-yard line. This half by the Redskins. Pete is from San Francisco. And and also, the only cameraman with Fox that wears a High Plains Drifter jacket at every game. You get that? There he is. There he is. <laughs> Ride him, Cowboy. Ride him. Pete, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much for a great season. He's the best. Second down and uh, short eight yards to go. Right through the hands of the backpedaling Henry Ellard, who already has... Caught a 59-yard pass from Farrakh today. And that ball was hot. It was a quick slant. Full speed throw there. And there's Buzz Schwing, who has been with us since the beginning. Buzz, Merry Christmas to you, and thank you for a great season. Hey, Buzz. Keep chewing that gum, brother. <laughs> Third down and eight. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Miller Lite player of the game. Buzz gets all those great low-level shots for us. Barat, he's got the first down. Getting his receiver, Henry Eller, a gain of 21 yards. We're just talking about a low-level end zone angle, and this is what our cameraman Buzz Swing just got for us. And this is what Gus sees, just what Buzz sees. Gus and Buzz looking at the same route. Henry Ellard, the old man, still making the plays. 
He had a jacket like you. I told you about that. It was 100% pleather. I like pleather. Yes, yeah, half plastic. You put it in your uh, dishwasher at night. Sixth time in his career, two consecutive Henry Ellard over 1,000 yards receiving. No one has brought more yards except for Jerry Rice in the NFL over the last six years. Barack on first down. Incomplete, Lamar Lathan pressuring him up the middle. It'll be second down. They fooled everybody. It was a play-action pass, and even the safety, Brett Maxey, comes up there to... He's ready to play the run, and it's not a run, but nobody was open. And Lamar Latham, because he had to hold the ball, Lamar Latham able to get a stick on it. Pretty big difference in yards this half. Wow. Second down and 10. And Allen got the block and falls through and is out to the 33. He picks up five. Ed Simmons opened up the door. Remember what we said in the first quarter. The difference in size in the interior line on the offense of the Redskins compared to the defense, it would show in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, the size factor could take over. Third down and four. Under 10 to play now on this Christmas Eve in Washington. Brian Mitchell following the block again of Ray Brown, and he's got the first down to the 40-yard line. That line seems to be getting stronger as the game goes on. Well, we said they had a lot of 300-pounders, and in the fourth quarter, they'd wear you down. Here comes the pulling guard, Ray Brown. We like Ray. Look at him go up in there. He's pushing everybody out of the way. Finally, the little DB... Brett Maxey is the only guy left. And here's what we talked about in the first quarter. The Redskins interior line, 311 versus 247. It'll wear you down in the fourth quarter. Mitchell gets the first down for a second time on third down. He's done that today. And around to Westbrook. No one to block. Nowhere to run. And nowhere to hide. Perot now is going to throw a block as he goes the other way. And Westbrook is finally ushered out of bounds by Carlton Bailey. Well, it worked at one time, but enough's enough. Now, you think the sidelines aren't in the game? Great sound by the people on the sideline picking up what everybody's saying. That's our uh, audio group, Jack Stocker of uh, Chicago, Larry Meyer, Tallahassee, Florida, getting us those great sounds from the sideline. You could tell everybody on the sideline, they were fighting mad. No more reverses! That's what they're hollering. Second down, 17 yards to go. 8.41 remaining in the game. Allen digging his way, and he's out to the 37. We've been talking about Ray Brown. Now there's a, you're going to see a guard, 77. This man hit 300 pounds when he was 17 years old. Number 77. Watch him pull. It's his turn. Follow the big man. There's 77. That videotape replay by Keith Bozarth of Peter St. Petersburg, Florida. John Mark Stewart from the great state of Maryland. And Neil Geyer from Pittsburgh. Gentlemen, thank you all season long for a great job. Third down and 12. Mitchell just dropped it. And he's been a great third down player today. He dropped it at the 42. And that have gotten all the way to the 50-yard line. So the Redskins have got a punt ball. 7.59 left in the game. Had his shoulder. He was looking over his left shoulder, trying to figure out what cut he was going to make, but he forgot to catch the ball. He was already designing how he was going to get away, but you got to catch the ball first. Carrier deep back, standing at about the 26. There you see the back of Matt Turk. He's had a good day punting. In fact, both punters today have been really, really effective. This Turk was a real fine. He was in the Rams camp. Fair catch by Terrier back at the 30-yard line. Punt at 32 yards. As Terry Allen hopes to bring home a great present on this Christmas Eve. They like us. He's led them on a couple touchdown drives today. And the defense of the Redskins has done a pretty good job against the Carolina Panthers in this second half. Only three first downs and a total of 52 yards. In this half. In this half. Here 
here comes Collins. He's trying to dig something up now. First down and 10 yards to go from the 30-yard line. It is he throws again, and the pass almost picked off by Ken Harvey. And what they're doing is, is they're lining up with four deep. And with the four deep, the linebackers are just dropped. He's going to play deep, 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 and that allows these linebackers to stay right in these zones, and you'll see he almost picks it off. Seems too easy. It, it, it's so easy, it's, you wonder why it's happening. There it is. It's a, a, a something that the Cowboys made famous, uh, the four deep secondary, and Redskins running full time now. Second down and 10. Collins looks like he's going to run, and he throws. It's incomplete. Grounding. Didn't see anybody. Christian says he was there. Bernie Kukar says <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> Tim Johnson just batted, the, batted him on the head. Tim Johnson has added life on long down for the Redskins with a good pass rush last week and this week. Number 57 on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. He blocked him. <laughs> good job by Washington trying to say he was blocking him, but Harvey was tackling him. I thought, yeah, Collins may have, in fact, seen them tackle Christian, so he threw by the call. There's 50s. Yeah, that's why he threw to him. Oh, yeah. He and said, was there was my guy. And there was that's a pretty, pretty good play yeah. by the rookie quarterback. And Frank Garcia was on Harvey, and Harvey was holding on. That was, that was a good play by everybody. First down at 10. Collins is going deep for Green. And Turner makes the interception. That's the first of his career. Replacing Daryl Green earlier. This time staying on the corner. And the rookie from Illinois, Scott Turner, picks off Collins, who is picked off for the second time today. And it's four deep, 29. Turner has the deep outside. Nothing can go by him. He's watching the ball. He actually a good throw here. He probably would have gotten a little trouble, but the ball hangs. Easy interception. Great quality to those pictures by our main man in video, Greg Gamble from great state of Texas, Bedford, Texas. Greg, Merry Christmas to you and your family, and thank you for two sensational years. And many more to come. Oh, Down to 10. Terry Allen gets the call. Slithers for a gain of three. Last week, that Redskin defense forced four turnovers out of the Rams in St. Louis, and today they have forced the Carolina offense, fairly conservative at that, to cough it up twice themselves. Now, the Redskins are going to run, and the Panthers know that, so they build eight in the box. They bring Brett Maxey right up like a linebacker. Everybody's standing in there now. Going to try to make him throw. And we're passing seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Redskins on two Terry Allen touchdown runs of a yard. Carolina on a touchdown run by more of one. 20 to 10 is the score. Nice block by Logan. And a run by Allen. Shy of the first down by about a yard. Carlton Bailey fought his way through to bring Allen down. If you're going to run the ball for the Redskins, you follow number 20, Logan, and number 67, Ray Brown. Every time we do a game, we end up circling these two people when you do a Redskin game. Ray Brown is right here, and Logan, watch, there's 20, there's 67. Look at those two. They both get their man, and away they go. Special thanks, too, to our technical director, Dana Slanius from Indianapolis, and Craig Marlowe, our technical producer. As Mark Logan on third and one comes close, maybe not close enough, Greg Cragen. With the stop for Carolina, Craig Marlowe, Dennis Lanius, thank you both for a great job all season long on the technical side, technical producer and technical director. Well, North Turner has a first down out of his offense. They continue to use that clock with a 10-point lead. He's trying to double the number of wins he had a season ago. Carolina is trying to get to 500. Down to five seconds, Kevin. Oh, hey, first 
first and ten from the 30. And Terry Allen. Again, busting free, and he picks up a gain of five. Maybe six to the 36. Bubba McDowell. Got him. Ray Brown, 67. Terry Allen, follow the backside guard. Look at 67 coming. Logan. And there goes Terry Allen. When you see Terry Allen run through there, number 20 and number 67, Logan and Brown, that's the combination. Sounds like a law firm. Allen, Logan, and Brown. I like it, don't you? And Glenn. <laughs> I've been debarred. Second down and four, handoff. Terry Allen, there he's first free. Has the first down to the 42-yard line. He's going after that record. He smells it, doesn't he? He smells it. And this time, Logan went the opposite direction. And he, bl he blocks the backside chase. There is, look who's on camera. That's Alan Powers. We call him Alpo from Billings, Montana. And Alpo is the best in the business. Back Alpo. to all of our camera guys are, Alan. Thank you so much. And there is Kim Elston. Texas. Kim we Elston Texas from Bel Air, Montana. Texas. He made that angel of you today on yeah. top of the hill. Bel Air, I used to bank there when I was in Houston. I think the bank closed. Kim Elston, Alan Powers. Great job, gentlemen. First and ten handoff. And Terry Allen is met by Sam Mills after a gain of one. And the Panthers are trying to stop this. They walked up again and built the eight-man front, daring the Redskins to throw. Watch this. Is this is Maxi Brett Maxi walking up? He's saying, "Eight man, I'm going to be free. We got to stop the run." He's the guy that had to take on Ray Brown. Safety coming up. Ray Brown's fully grown, 330 pounds. There you see the Panthers rushing defense, what they've done today. When you see those graphics up, our broadcast associate, our graphics producer, Bo Garrett, puts those up and does all the research. Second down and nine on the seventh play of the drive and bent backwards is Terry Allen, who is met by a host of players, including Darian Connor, Carlton Bailey, Sam Mills, 51, getting off the pile, and graphics operator Bud Bray from Indianapolis, Indiana. Our crew on Christmas Eve in Washington. 314 to play here in the fourth. So Santa's gonna be a little bit late, kids. <laughs> he's he's busy with the fans here at RFK tonight. Dark red and moon. Well, it's Thomas Hayden Church from Wings like you've never seen him before. It's one half of TV's funniest couple. Check out Ned and Stacy tomorrow at its new time, 9, 8 Central. On the Fox Television Network. Okay. And <laughs> he forgot the color of his beard there. <laughs> that Santa looked tired. <laughs> Man, that, he looked like even on a Harley. Third down, seven. Mitchell's in the backfield with the bootleg by the quarterback, Farrat, brought down at the 39 by Lamar Lathan. Didn't fool him at all. And Lathan is down. Quick change of direction on him. Twisted his left ankle. Looks like it. Let's see if we can spot it here. Made a nice defensive play. I didn't see it there, did you? Unless his foot got stuck in the it could be sloppy turf here. Redskins had had a drive over four minutes when they took over at their 20 yard line. So they had moved the ball well and eaten up a lot of the clock here in the fourth quarter. Anyone should have been hurt. Probably should have been Farad. 310 remaining in the fourth. Redskins still holding on to the lead, but the Panthers have some time. Back in Washington, Lathan is hobbling off the field. Ferenese will take his place. 20 to 10 is the score. Redskins, and there you see our booth. There's a, not you. Oh, okay. There's Kevin McHale. Wave, Kevin, wave real quick. There's Kevin McHale who sets up our booth from the audio department. Then I want you to get a shot over here of these two guys. This is, uh, who is it? This is Jimmy uh, Stamos, our spotter. And here's Pat McGrath, our statistician. Guys, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for a great season. Our Fox crew, the people that you do not see, but who make this broadcast as good as they can every week, regardless of what day or what time or what location. Or if you can get home or not. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jimmy, and thank you, 
Blocking the punt. They're going after the punt. Matt Turk will be punting. Play clock is at two, and a big fat wow. football has just come on the field. And it's a fumble to the 40, and no one jump it. It's to the 45. The referee is closing in on it. It's at the 50, and nobody jumps on the football. And finally, it's recovered at the 45-yard line by Chad Cota. And that helped the Redskins because the Panthers had an all-out punt block and had him a little bit nervous as to who was blocking who. So a Redskin fan saw that and threw out what was described as a big, fat football. <laughs> 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 that was a that was unusual description yet. Oh, it was. Yeah, Who's got that? That looked like Richard Pettibone carrying that ball out there. You know that guy is going to bring that home to his kids for Christmas. And say, Merry Christmas, kids. Here's a little present I got for you at the game. Now they're going to try to pop it. What do you do, Jerry, in a situation like that? You stick something into it? No, you put it under your arm and you run. <laughs> Turk will punt the ball. Wow! Gets it high. Terry will let it bounce at the 10. Down at the 11. Vanderbeek jumped on the ball. 50 yard punt by Matt Turk. You know what's great about the wild card game? Everything is kicked up a notch. It's a true underdog game. You love the intensity of running backs, wide receivers, quarterbacks, defensive guys. Boom, yeah, they're smashing and hitting. Hey, look, this is good hitting weather. This is football weather. Let's go get them. You have to win. Being in the playoffs is the greatest feeling in the world. This is football at its best. The NFC Wild Card Playoff next Sunday on Fox. Check local listings. That'll be a good one. All right, here we go. First down and 10 yards to go for Kerry Collins. And he finds his wide receiver, Mark Carrier, who pulls a defender on his back all the way to the 39 with the pickup of 28. No huddle offense, of course. Everybody's going two minutes to the inside slant the way they started off. First down and 10. And 2-11 to play. Collins almost threw it off. Darrell Pounds just about had the pick and would have sealed this one for the Redskins. Tried the exact same route that he just hit on and Pounds just drifted back into the zone. Timeouts remaining. Special thanks to and our statistical side to Barry Strump from Washington, D.C. Barry Strump with us all the time around the country. Second down and ten. Just before the two-minute warning, Carrier was going wide to the side, but that was the first option, and he goes instead to Anthony Johnson, who takes it for a first down to the 47-yard line on a pickup of 13. 20 to 10 Redskins. We are at the two-minute warning. RFK Stadium was filled earlier on. Now some of the fans have gone home to be with their families on this Christmas Eve. And there's our Miller Lite player of the game, Terry Allen, who has had a big day rushing for the Redskins, 92 yards on 28 carries. And he has to thank Ray Brown and Mark Logan because they led the way for just about every yard that he got. First down for Carolina, 47-yard line in this regular season-ending game. And the throw caught Don Beebe. Down and a gain of 11 on another first down. He says he was not touched, but the referee disagrees. And at the 37-yard line, they'll line up again with the first and 10. And an outcut. Doesn't throw many outcuts. That was an outcut and wide open. in traffic going deep in the end zone looking for green and almost picked off Stanley Richard got a hand on it incomplete pass as they were going for Willie Green good pressure on the quarterback by Tim Johnson they just managed to get Tim out of the quarterback's way and really never opened it's nice coverage excellent coverage Redskins have gone in that four zone, Jerry, which you've talked about all day. That's the difference. And look at only one catch with 10 thrown to him today for the wow. favorite target and one of the co-MVPs of this team, Willie. Really. Second down and 10. And that whistles over everybody's head. Incomplete. They have not been able to uh, take this four deep defense and do anything with it. And really, the uh, 
The Redskins have gone to this in the last half of this season, and uh, it's really built for what they do. I know the coach likes the dog and blitz, but I think he realized the material he has is better off laying back and playing, and that's what they've done. Our game was produced today by Jeff Gowan, the former pride of the Delaware Blue Hens. Fine basketball program up there. Jeff has had a sensational season. Third down and 10. Collins. And caught Don Beebe. And a first down to the 22 and a pickup of 16. And Carolina is still breathing with 116 to play. We saw him do this against the uh, Saints. When it looked like uh, all hope was lost, they kept fighting back and scored. Carolina has a timeout remaining. Washington has two. Jeff Gowan was our producer today and all season long. What a good one. You're going to miss him over the holidays. I will. Jeff Gowan was our producer. Director is Andy Kindle. We've got a fight in the flu all weekend, so Andy, we appreciate your great work not only today but all season long. And our associate director... Larry Lancaster does so many things in so many ways for this group. Loud Larry, we call him. Executive producers of Fox Sports, David Hill and Ed Gorn. And it's been a great second year on Fox, Coach. Been great to be with you for the second year. It has. I love you, man. Jerry, <laughs> you are not getting my Diet Coke. Oh, let me go over here and see if I love somebody else. <laughs> Carolina took over at their own 11. First down and 10. Collins again to the end zone. Knocked away. Again, the secondary comes up big. And Scott Turner and Stanley Richard tag team Willie Green in the end zone. Over and under. One inside, one outside. Carey now is throwing up a hope because there's nobody open. Been great coverage. One over the top. Hey, see this guy? He just gave me my diet. I, I'm going to go over to him. Hey, man. Number 52 on the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty. Still first down. 52 is Matt yeah, Elliott. Yeah, he um, beat out Harry Boatswain in the preseason who had come over from San Francisco and march it back now. It was a late flag. And Must have hit somebody in the face. It's back to the 32-yard line. So now it becomes first down and 20 with 114 to play on this Christmas Eve game in Washington. 20 to 10, Redskins lead it. Two touchdown runs by Terry Allen. Collins hit as he throws, that's a live ball. Which is caught almost in the stands. Big hit by Dexter Nottage. Caught by that guy. His right tackle, Mark Dennis, got pushed right back into him. And that's why he had to throw that ball like that. How would you sum up Collins' rookie year, Coach? Future. Got a real future. You like him? I like all three quarterbacks. The two with uh, the Redskins and Mark Collins, I think we're lucky enough to see three future uh, good, good quarterbacks in the National Football League. Second down and 20. Draw play handoff. Anthony Johnson swerving up the middle. Found his way inside the 25 and finally brought down to the 24. It looks like Carolina will take their final timeout. Burned their last one with 102 to play. Carolina was trying to go to 8 and 8. The first expansion team ever to go to 500 in any sport. And they still had a good year. Oh, they had seven wins is three more than the other expansion team, Jacksonville. Yeah. Really, both these teams, you're teams to look for in the future. Talk about the quarterbacks being quarterbacks of the future. Here you got two teams, both pretty young. Redskins, the second youngest in the NFL. Carolina in expansion process with the rookie quarterback. These are two teams to keep an eye on. The only thing the Carolina Panthers did, Kevin, is uh, they played older people on defense. And so they're, even though they're an expansion team, they got a lot of age. I'm second oldest defense in the National Football League. So they're going to have to find some uh, people in the draft, get some young replacements. And the old guys play good on defense. I'm not sure they can't, they don't have another year in them, but they don't have four years left. So in. your worry is putting all your eggs in this basket instead of down the road. Well, they gave up three years from now for right now, and that's probably the best way to do it with today's National Football League. Better get every win. Oh, what a block. Third and 12 pass. First down. Caught by Carrier. Inside the 10. Inside the 5. And down to the 2. That rookie tackle we talked about, Blake Brockermeyer, he could have been arrested the way he blocked Ken Harvey. I mean, he folded him right over and buried him.
Carolina cannot stop the clock. That was a pickup of 22 yards and trying to make it close as Collins just spikes it, stops the clock at 39 seconds. The only thing he could do. 20 to 10. Redskins on top by 10. So it's going to take at least two scores to tie, unless, of course, you throw in the two-point conversion and all that nonsense. But that's what makes it great with that two-point play now. It goes well, on coaching. You, you go for the, what you do is you, you go for the one. So if you get an onside kickoff, you only need a first down to kick the field goal to tie it up. So if they can get it in here, you get the one point. Second down and goal from the one. Collins to Green. Touchdown, Carolina. Now they're out of timeouts, but you got to kick the extra point so that if you can get the ball again to the 35 yard line, you got a chance to tie this thing. And if they tie this, I'll see you next year. I'm out of here. <laughs> you want to get your plane? My plane leaves. The plane, the plane. <laughs> Extra point try by John Casey. Now your whole year comes down to the onside kick. That's something. I like that. That was a 12-play, 89-yard drive, taking two minutes off the clock, engineered by rookie quarterback Kerry Collins, going to Willie Green with his second touchdown pass in as many weeks. When you get down this close, there's no combination coverages. Oh, that's a nice job by the defensive back. Turner. Wow, I mean, you can't play any better than that. He went up, got his hand in there. What you tell your defensive back when that happens is they're paying the other side also. He gets paid and he made a play. But now, the on here you've been in training camp, you've been fighting all year, and the whole thing gets down to this onside kick. I like that. I'd say if you told these two teams that as an expansion team, you'd finish seven or eight, eight and eight, whatever. The Redskins, you'd say you double your win total from last year. They'd say, yeah, you know what? That would be a nice jump up for us. Boy, well, this thing, if they can double their wins for next year, they've got a great year. Now they're cooking. Last year at home, they were 0-8, the Redskins were, under first-year coach, then first-year coach Norm Turner. This year, they're 3-4 and four and trying to go to 4-4 four and four at home at RFK. 35 seconds left. You see the onside kick set up by Carolina. And Casey gets it. And recovered by Washington at the 44. Redskins got it. Carolina can't stop the clock. And the Redskins, barring a complete and utter disaster, will finish this season 6-10. and 10. Tom Capers and the Carolina Panthers will finish the season 7-9. Norv Turner goes 4-4 four four at home, including two of the biggest upset wins in the history of the Washington Redskins. They beat Dallas twice, and they were not favored in either game. In fact, they were underdogs by 17 and 13 points. But they beat them both times. And that's what they've got to hang their head on. Coming up next, except on the West Coast, Oops, the world's funniest outtakes. One nail down and it's over. It's history. No timeouts left for the Panthers. Still a good year for them. Organization that next year will have the finest playing facility in the National Football League. If you live near Charlotte, buy a ticket, go see it. Kneel down and the Redskins end it, winning three of their last four games. A nice way to go. And their second consecutive win in a row. And the first time they have put together two wins all season long. Norv Turner has certainly got this football franchise on the right track. Back-to-back -back wins for the first time since 1992. Terry Allen didn't reach the all-time single-season Redskin rushing record of John Riggins. Nonetheless, a very good day. Over 90 yards rushing for Terry Allen. Two touchdown runs. Washington wins it 20 to 17 over Carolina. We'll be back with more on Christmas Eve from the nation's capital right after this.